Ritzaki. So. <laughs> Why the chairman has to run around here with <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the December 5th. Uh, meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission with the clerk. Help me with a roll call, please. Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Vice Chairman Margiotta. Not here. Clerk Roberts here. Mr. Hughes. Mr. Oikel. Here. Mr. Hammer. Nope. Mr. Homicki. Here. Mr. Dean. Here. Mr. Allard. Here. Mr. Edwards. Here. Ms. Antoniak. Not here. Mr. Silver. Here. Okay. Right, so, thank you. If my math is correct, there's eight of us and we can all participate this evening. Um, I'm going to call up the applicant and then I'll kind of describe some of the rules. Um, I don't know if it's really necessary, but the first application is a public hearing application 1964-17-Z, Weathersfield Automotive LLC seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.E. Uh, regulations for the continued use of a general repair and automotive sales at 404 Silestine Highway. For those of you, you'll just bear with me in this uh, moment, um, who are unfamiliar with the public hearing process, the applicant will describe the proposal to the commission. The commission will ask the applicant questions about the proposal. When we've uh, heard, it, heard enough, we want to turn and ask for the public's comment and input into the proposal. We will seek that we'll then turn back to the applicant to add any additional comments to it the commission will <clears throat> if they are comfortable with everything they've heard um, potentially make a motion to close the hearing and move on to deliberate about the application itself all right so that's the process so would you take a moment and introduce yourself and then <coughs> give us a description of the proposal uh greg leishatz from weathersfield weathersfield automotive i live here in town um for 54 years I purchased Weathersfield Automotive about a year and a half ago. Uh, it's been an uh, automotive repairs facility and gas station since 1941. Mr. Martell has owned it since 1944. Um, there's no longer gas there. It hasn't been there for about six years now. We still have the pumps out front. We still have the canopy that you guys approved um, 20 years ago. Uh, and all we're doing is... Um, reapplying for the repairs license that is still up and running. I'm also in a Connecticut emissions testing station. Um, and we're uh, applying for the repairs license and also a dealer's license uh, so we can um, help the customers out with uh, maybe a used car here and there uh, on selling cars. All right. So uh, I'll just make note of the fact that uh, everybody, there is a memo to the file November 29th from Peter to us, and then there's a, another piece of correspondence from Justin, a zoning enforcement officer, to us November 9th, um, kind of outlining the issues. So, uh, Mr. Leishax, I understand that there's a, a plan that you, <coughs> you would like to describe with the parking Yes, I, I, I gave a plan uh, about a month ago uh, to the town uh, describing the parking and everything in there. I revised the plan. I, I brought it to him yesterday. I didn't, again, I, I should have known better. Uh, I brought him three copies. Uh, but as far as the old plan is, there's really nothing changing. The only thing that's changing is the planters that were there. There was a, um, a planter in the center of my yard um, and two planters on the right side, north and south side, which were taken out about eight, nine years ago uh, because of the emissions testing station. Uh, we bring in tractor trailers, we bring in trailers, we bring in boats, we bring in all types of vehicles in there now. And to have those uh, in place it was uh, damaging a lot of vehicles, and it was hard to turn around, so that was removed uh, a while back. Uh, as in the cars, uh, it, on the old plan, that's fine. I'm, I'm good with the 10 cars on the side that uh, was approved uh, 20 years ago, and I put two cars out front, um, which the facility probably can hold 20 to 25 cars if you park them right. Um, but like I say, I'm only looking for those 
10 on the side, two out front to, the be, uh, to uh, be displayed, and then, you know, my regular traffic that comes in and out. I do 40 cars a day for emissions. So it, it, it's, it moves along, you know, it's 10, 12 minutes a car, so it's pretty busy down there now. And uh, I did some uh, improvement already to the building, uh, which I don't know if, if anybody knows me from town. I, I used to own the Flower Box, uh, the old Wilson Seafood building. I revamped that building, and now it's a flourishing building in town um, with the, the cafe that was below. So I plan on uh, dumping some money into this building uh, in the next year or so. Uh, I was told that I can, uh, the, the town said they have a uh, facade program, which I'm going to apply for. And uh, we're going to make it look really great, you know. And I'll take, you know, if anybody wants to tell me how they want it to look, uh, we'll all work at it, you know, and, and, and make it really good. So that's, that's all I'm looking for right now. It's, it's nothing big. It's just that we must have fell through the cracks years ago with the, with the licensing. So all I'm really here for is the um, dealer's license. Uh, the, the repairs license has been there since 1944. So, so thank you. That last statement was what I was looking for, clarification. So <clears throat> we have a prior permit um, to your reference. It was from 1999, I think, approved uh, by PNZ in 99. Correct. For the, for the gas canopy, et cetera, and there were five, <clears throat> and this is outlined uh, in Peter's memo, five conditions. You know, there'd be some driveway arrows, a dumpster and screening, pavement repairs. Of course, this is all back then. Uh, parking, striping, and, and planting plan for landscaped islands. Um, and then there were also conditions for the general repairs license that starts with the 10 vehicles, as you, as you noted, and unread, no unregistered vehicles, no junk cars, no cars offered for sale, and uh, no accumulation of tires and auto parts and debris. Pretty standard stuff, actually. Co Just, correct, you know, correct. Good, good. Um, visuals site visuals right? correct so can you you know i'm sure this is not all compliant be, you know as you buy the property i'll bet a lot of this is not compliant can you, uh, can well, you understand what's not most of it is yeah well we have two cars there now that were uh fixed uh and then brought back because they blew the motors uh they're sitting on my lot uh, i do have a couple buses in there that i'm, I'm repairing um for a gentleman that uh is going to put them and make them into motorhomes. Uh, we do have some tires, but the tires weekly now that I'm hooked up with uh, Town Fair Tire weekly to every 10 days, they come down and, and dispose of my tires for me because that's a big so, thing. So how would you describe the condition of the pavement? How would you? Uh, pavement is shot. Uh, yeah, I, I just did um, some extensive work to the front of the building. The first three bays, I put concrete down because it, it looks nicer. It's cleaner. Um, and I plan on doing that to the side of the building on the two other bays on the side of the concrete and then paving the whole uh, parking lot next year. Okay. And as most of this comes with, you know, again, looking respectable, right? And so correct, like correct. condition and striping. Correct. And so as we go through this, I'm sure that's going to be part of the discussion. You know, how do we get it into that state of condition again? Well, that's going to be in that stage uh, probably by August. Uh, <clears throat> June, July, August, when the, when the summer hits. Okay. I can't do it now. General Paving has already shut down their operation, and everybody's been shut down their, uh, their asphalt operation, so we're not going to do that, but I like concrete. Okay. You know, so. I'm, I'm, it costs more, but it's costs more. more but it's, it's more yeah. efficient, I believe, and you know. It lasts longer. So, Correct. So I think what I'm hearing is that we're talking about 12 cars versus 10. <coughs> Correct. Uh, probably up front, in, and I assume it's not... On the state property, it's on no, your own it's on property. my property. Two two cars right in front of the canopy. There's going to be two cars uh, facing north south. All right. And and <clears throat> and sales, which I think is probably going to be the uh, the bigger issue here besides site condition is the sales because we don't have that today, right? Correct, correct. Is that's that's what we're uh, pretty much that's what we're applying for is the uh, everything all in once because yeah. uh, like I say, since 1944 there has been a repairs license there. We're still running the operation. We work for motor vehicle. We have the emissions testing station. It's been there for over eight years, I believe, eight or so. And um, so we're just trying to comply with the motor vehicle. We're trying to comply with you. And like I said, uh, my past practice or my, my track history, as you can see, um, I brought Wilson Seafood back to 
life again because it's the flower box now and it's the now it's Ich Ichiban the, the restaurant and uh, I plan on doing the same with this building. Thank you. Uh, other people's questions? I'm monopolizing the conversation there for a bit. Rich? Where, how far back does your property go? Uh, about 15 feet from the building. Okay. So like those buses and stuff? Are the buses are, are right now parked uh, under the um, Northeast Utilities. Uh, my partner had a contract with them at one time, a lease there. They're, they're you know, they're, they're not too... They're not too pushy with that, or they're, they're not too stringent with it. They just don't want um, things growing up. Growing, and by us parking vehicles there and, and keeping it clean, I plow the snow back there, it's better for them also. And they fly the chopper every month over the top, and I'd be getting fined if I was doing something wrong per utilities, which I'm not. Um, and uh, so that's, I mean, it's... You know that I can't put the buses out front. I'm working on them now, so it's it's like you know I put them out back. They'll be out of there in a month or so. You know when I when I you know I want them out of there before that, for before the snow flies. But it yeah. depends on parts. The ones on the the parking on the side facing Dunkin' Donuts. Yes. It doesn't look like there's enough room between the edge of the pavement and where you have the cones for the emissions to park. Oh no, there's plenty of room. There's uh, right now, as you can you'll see, there's a. It wasn't a this morning. <laughs> Oh no, there is. There's um, the cones are there, and there's a Buick Skylark. Matter of fact, that's sitting there, and it's right in front of the Buick, and it's all right down the road. There's a Ford 2001 Ford sitting there. There's a um, I don't know what else is there, but yeah, James. When James does the emissions, they come right down the cones. They park there before his door. He goes in, backs out. It's been working great. You know, it's it's plenty plenty of room if if, if you really really came down here and seen it. You know, well, well, I, I guess can't park. I can't room. park a big limousine yeah. sticking out. But well, I guess there's plenty of room to park cars and not move them. And not move them. Correct. Right. Yeah. They're, okay. they're, you know, and it's it's sporadic with the with the emissions. Sometimes I got four cars in line. Yeah. And then sometimes James, what are you doing today? You know, huh, there's nobody here. Like Monday, there's nobody there. I, I think I did 17 cars. That's you know, but today I did uh, 38. You know, so it's, it's sporadic, you know. So is the intent that 10 cars are going to be for sale? Um, so they're not moving? Is that what the point is? Not really. I mean, I'd like to see five or six cars for sale on the parking lot. I just want to be able to, I just want to be able to have a dealer's license. So when someone does come in for emissions and, and, they're, and they come in with a, like a, a 2,000 car and, and, and it's the catalytic converters are gone or something's gone in a car, which... Two thousand dollars worth of work. Hey, Greg, can't you find me a car? I said, can't sell cars here. I'm sorry. So it's more of a, a thing for the for the town, as in being able to say, yeah, you know something. Let me go to the auction for you. Let me. What are you looking for? Let me grab a car. Well, you know, let me grab two cars. Or, you know, and I'll have two or three out there. You know, and if uh, that works for me, you know, I'm not going to be a. I don't plan on opening a car sales a uh, huge. Like the guy on the, the Berlin Turnpike, you know, it's 55 cars out there. I counted them the other day. You know, there's, I mean, <coughs> I'm not planning on doing that. You know, I've been in town for 54 years. You guys come down and slap my hand and say, Greg, what's going on? I'll move them. I, I'm, you know, I mean, there's a lot of people in the town that aren't, aren't, aren't really cooperating, but I'll cooperate with you. You know, I mean, it's not a problem. Did you have a question? Yeah. You got any agreement with the CLMP? On the uh, right now, uh, no, I don't have an agreement with them. No, there's a lot of... Um, Wayne used to talk to him periodically, uh, but no, like Dunkin' Donuts doesn't, Manny doesn't have an agreement with him. The, um, I believe the dog, the new dog place, the Beaver Road, doesn't have an agreement with him. Lemoore's and all the rest down the line, Premier Cleaners, the bank, the smoke shop, Caesars. I mean, I think Caesar does because he parks a bunch of, not Caesar, now it's a new company, but the mobile. But all these people, they just, they, they clean it, they keep it open for them, and CLP likes it because they don't have to worry about going in there when they have to work on their lines. You know, so, if, you know. Um, what about the buses? How long have they been there? How long They've been there for uh, about, a, about two months now. 
and um, we plan on, like I just said, we, hopefully we'll get a monitor before the snow flies. Okay. Yeah. Are you, are you going to come into us with any kind of a plan about what you're going to do or want to do? Because this isn't a plan that you're I don't, don't want to do anything. Us today, this sketch. I, 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 all I want to do is keep it the same. <clears throat> There's nothing more I want to do. It. All I want to do is put 10 cars there that I, was there. I, I don't see anything there in front of me that makes any sense as far as meeting the requirements that the town has pointed out to you, the zoning enforcement officer, and meeting past obligations. Or saying, I'm going to do this, this, and this instead, and having us approve it. Well, the town hasn't given me any problems with it. I haven't had any fines. I haven't had any things. I've been, I've been, I've been I didn't think it looked very Kemp down there. I mean, you had so much, it's a crowded site, period. Okay. That's the way I see it. And All right, usually, a, a, usually a gas station or a, a repair shop is crowded when you have vehicles well, in there to be in work. some are in better shape than this well, one. Why don't you explain one to me then? Concerned. Which one is? Is Lamore's cleaner than mine? Lamore's is, basically, oh. and that's as good oh. an example as any. Is Lamore's no clean problems. compared to mine? Up, including across the street. No, right, I'm just asking you. I'm, a, I'm only here to asking you for 10 cars that was you already granted. Right. I'm not so, here asking for anything out of the ordinary. So, you know, well, I, all we're asking of you is to come in to us and explain what you're going to do. I, I, did, I did come in to explain to Peter. For uh, plantings or anything like that that were required. If you would, if you would like, I have no room right now for them because I explained to you in the beginning that tractor trailers come in there and rip up the plantings, rip up the curbing, and I'm spending money every time they come in there. If you want me to throw little planters like the guy on the Berlin Turnpike is, no, no, I'll throw no, little no, planters no. on there. Yes, so. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so is there a. Explain this. Okay. You applied for a special permit. Yes. Legally, to be entitled to a special permit, you have to meet all the zoning regulations. If you meet all the zoning regulations, then you're entitled to apply for a special permit. Then there's standards for that. Correct. But as a baseline, mm -hmm. all the zoning requirements have to be met. Otherwise, we do not have the authority to issue a special permit. I understand. So when I read this application, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to enhance what, oh, absolutely. what, George, what George is sure, saying, sure. is that I think it's necessary for us to have a grasp of that everything that you're doing meets the zoning regulations and what we are told by by staff yes is there are certain aspects of what you are doing which doesn't meet zoning requirements and the first thing we have to do as a body what we do for everybody that mm -hmm. comes in for a special mm -hmm. permit is to agree that yes you do meet that we hold that everybody that comes in we hold them accountable to meet the zoning requirements before we get into the standards. So my suggestion is yes, sir. that if there are issues out, potentially outstanding, I'm not saying they are there, not at this point, that there are certain things that have to be done to meet those regulations, then I think you need to sit down with staff and go through that so they can indicate to me that you meet those meet the zoning uh, requirements, then we can get into the special permit uh, requirements. So, so I've asked Peter, because what I was hearing was <clears throat> that there's a plan associated with the 1999, um, and if there were some small revisions to that that were being requested, like two extra cars, I guess I was, in my mind, wondering, can we refer back to that plan, and if the applicant is okay with developing that plan as it exists with some small modification of a couple extra spots, is yeah. that doable? So just to sort of tell you where you are at this moment, you did receive in your packet this sketch. Yes. Um, which I did comment on. I met with Greg on Thursday. Was that we met out there? Correct. Um, to go over that and basically uh, summarize the comments in the memo. He did come in to the office uh, yesterday. Yes. With a uh, copy of the 1999 plan with some minor uh, revisions. Um, so the plan that I received yesterday, unfortunately you didn't get copies of, uh, is, is quite a bit different than the sketch that he submitted in the packet. So just to clarify that. So what he is now <coughs> asking uh, to do is on the south side of the parking lot on the Dunkin' Donuts side is just maintain uh, the parking that's there today. So if you were out there today, and I think Rich was out there today, there are 
10 parking spaces there. So he wants to keep those for cars, customers, um, whatever purposes uh, he, he needs it for. Uh, the only additional parking that he's seeking approval for is two spaces in the front, in the front of the pump, between the pump and the sidewalk. And I, you would use those for the cars? Sale? I would use those for the sale cars, the two okay. sale cars. Yep. Yes, so, sir. So two, two spaces there. Additionally, underneath the pump, since he's not using the pumps, you could probably have four more spaces. Correct. But, uh, that's not shown on here, but nevertheless, there's room for that. Um, for what is that last thing? The there's, pump. where the pumps are, there's, in essence, four additional parking spaces yeah, there. Yeah, but what's he going to do about that? You want to use that for, well, that's, or not? No, no. I can't eliminate the, the pad that's there. That's, you know, cars still drive through. I mean, you know how many cars I get there that think I'm the right food bag? I say, I don't have gas here. They, oh, that's right. I got to go down the street. I mean, people pull in. What I do now for the people also is James, my emissions guy, he takes the car from the back and he pulls it to the front underneath the canopy when it's snowing or raining and he gets it so the people don't get wet. Okay, so that's just a, pretty much a drive-through. I mean, I don't want to park cars there all the time. I just want to be able to have that for the drive-through and for my emissions. The, the, the major concern here is, is I need to keep that emissions open, and I need to, I need to redo this building, and I have to need to make it nice. This DMV is also part of this whole whole thing, and all I want to do is come in and leave the ten cars on the side. The two cars are going to be parked out front, as I, and I, as I showed. Those will probably be the two cars with the, hey, for sale. Everything else that you see down there is going to stay the same. Yes, the tires are behind the dumpster, but like I say, every 10 days or so, uh, Town Fair comes and picks up the tires from me. The dumpster enclosure is, is broken. We're going to fix that. We, it takes time to do this stuff. Now it's winter time. You know, I guarantee you by June, July, you're going to look at the building and you're going to say to me, wow, okay, compared to what it was four or five years ago. Can I, you sit down with the town staff, as my colleague said? And, uh, I already have. A plan? I already have. The, the, it's, not a, it's not a big plan. It's, it, it's all I'm... No, I know, uh, no, I know. Oh, yeah. It's well, not a big plan. I, I already, I guess I, yes, yes, Mr. Silver. I, I have already sat down with the town, and they've said, Greg, you know, your repair license is not a problem because I've been there since 1944. All I'm asking is for a dealer's license. And all I'm asking is to be able to sell a couple cars there a month. I'm not asking for 45 or 50 cars um, on a two-bay garage. I hope not. Site wouldn't accommodate. Site wouldn't accommodate. It doesn't accommodate his either. But all I'm saying is here I want to make this building that's been um, run down for the last 40 years, I want to I want to make it nice, and I want to be able to, to to take care of the people that show up at my emissions testing things. I don't see a big problem of of the place being there since 1944, as exactly the same as it's been since 1944. I'm not adding on to the building. I'm not adding nothing else. I took out two. I took out four foot spot in the front where the curb was getting rigged and I took out another four or five footer and another four or five footer on the other side. You can't get the tractor trailers in there. All I'm saying is it's going to be paved next year. The facade's going to be going up next year. I'm going to put hundred, maybe $200,000 into that building next year. I mean, if it, again, I'm the kind of guy that does it. Okay. And I, I'm trying to tell the town that all I want to do is put two extra cars. Take the two extra cars out then. Yeah. Take the two extra cars out. Put that down on paper and uh, work with the town planner and uh, you know come up with something that can well, come in front of us. That's well, right. I'm putting it in front of you right now. I need that. I need that license. I'm not going to keep coming back here and, and having the town say to me, "I can't have a license for something that's been there since 1944." So no, so nobody has said that you can't have a license. I mean, it, you're making an application for a license. Okay. And we have many people coming before us for special permits. Correct. I understand Which that. We treat every application. Okay. You have my you have my application. If it's not if it doesn't fulfill fulfill your things, then you need to tell me and you need to sit down or somebody needs to sit down with me. So all, all I'm trying to do is the general the general yes, repairs license. Yes, sir. Comes from DMV. Correct. correct. And you need approval here before you can get it. No, I have the general repairs license oh, okay. already from DMV. Okay. It's it, it, for the car sales. 
I need it for the car sales. Okay, so let's let's move into the car sales. Yes, I think I think there's a plan that exists from '99. It's got some sketches on it. It's Correct. obviously very minimal, right? So right. Let's, let's really get into what's probably going to be, I think, the meat of this thing, and and it's the car sales, right? Is it, is it something that we're going to uh, open up on the Silas Dean Highway? So, Peter, remind me. We've been through this before, and and we have one, I think, right? And you have two in town now. So two in town, right? The the Berlin Turnpike. <coughs> and we talk about and, after and Maple Street, correct? And, so and I, just, I just so happen to have a copy. They didn't approve any of those, Mr. Chairman. Yes, you did. Yeah, yes, we did. Yeah. did. Now, on uh, May 15th, 2007, you approved uh, for 58 Maple. Yeah, but inside. So no. No, you yeah, no. you allowed them to have them outside. outside the display? The so let them go through it. The condition, I'm just reading the, the permit, um, sell not more than three cars per month. You had limitations on what he could do outside, but that was basically limited to storage, you know, of unfit vehicles, unregistered vehicles. Uh, uh, you did limit him to uh, vehicles no larger than a full-size pickup or a sport utility vehicle. Um, no advertising on the vehicles outside the building. So those were no the- No cars outside the building. No. You didn't say that. Am I reading the same thing you are? Yeah. Where does it say no cars outside of the building? Sell not more than three cars per month. No storage of unregistered vehicles. No storage of any vehicle unfit for repair outside. There's nothing that preve prevents this permit from selling them outside. Okay. You're right. Right. So I, I think- if I remember correctly, the discussion went around and around. You know, we didn't really want the for sale sign on the vehicles, right? So they're not supposed to be painting the, you know, whatever they use on the windows saying for sale, right? Yeah. No streamers, no okay. banners. But, that but the vehicles thing. that are owned by the by the by the by the property owner for sale can be there. I think that's pretty much how it. And we exists. can't limit the number, right? Well, well, you can do anything you yes, want. I'm just saying it exists. Yeah, all right. okay. in, in a very limited capacity, it exists. Right. Right. So he's asking for two cars. They're just going to look like parked cars, and he gets to point them out whenever somebody's in need of Correct. a car. I mean, so that's, that's basically that's how it works. On but it, you're, you're asking really for the license so you can go out to the auctions. So you I have, can go to the, the auction to, to have that. the cars. To be able right. to say to you, if you came come down here, Ryan, mm -hmm. hey, you know, my car didn't pass emissions. I got to put two grand into it. Hey, can you find me a $1,500 car? And you get to go. Boom. <laughs> I shoot to the auction for him. I say, find I found me. a car for you. What do you think? It's on my lot for two days, you know. Um, <laughs> listen, I'm... <sighs> Right. Don't so, limit me to, 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 to being successful, you know? So, so, the, so I, what I, Peter just described is that, and this is confirming what I thought, your actual license comes from DMV, but correct. The, town, the town has to support it. Support it. say that, you know, they've given you approval probably in the land records, right, to do it. All right, so that's, that's the game. I was going to ask Peter to continue what he was sharing with us about the 1999 permit. Sure. And yep. enhance further with the yep. other six bullets that came through from ZBA. Yep. I think that focuses on the site, the improvements. Yep. I was going to ask questions of why the canopy's still there, why the gas pumps might still be there, but those will be my next questions after Peter continues his uh, conversation to follow sure. up with what Dan and George were talking so about. So in 1999, you did approve the gas uh, pump canopy. Um, you limited the parking to 10 9 by 18 parking stalls along that southern property line. You had a couple of conditions that the driveway directional arrows at both curb cuts uh, are painted, that the dumpster uh, is installed and screened. So the dumpster that exists there today is actually on CL&P property. There's an area behind the building in the corner of the building where there's presently some storage and things like that. Greg and I talked about screening that in, moving the, mo moving the screening and all that stuff into that corner. That way he can have storage back there. Uh, and it wouldn't be visible to anybody. And Correct. Uh, so we talked so about. I agree, I agree with that. Yep. So uh, the other conditions were that the pavement be repaired. And obviously, this was in 1999. So uh, parking stalls all be striped. They're presently all faded now. Uh, and that, that the three islands in the front have a planting plan provided. So those islands are gone. So you need to really talk about that. And then in 2003, when he went to the ZBA, 
for the general repairs license renewal. Once again, 10 vehicles uh, were limited. Uh, no parking of unregistered vehicles except for the occasional you know, one or two day event. No junk cars. Uh, there was also a condition that no cars be offered for sale, so you would be modifying that condition. No outside accumulation of unused tires. I, I think if that area in the back is screened, uh, that can be the area where that happens. Uh, no outside storage of auto parts. And then lastly, no debris left outside. So if we were to, are you all set? I'm just going to ask you, would we also have to modify two, no parking of unregistered vehicles? When you own the vehicle for sale, is it registered? It's not registered, correct. Okay. Are you going to present, Peter, are you looking for getting, continue to work with him and come back to us? And we, well, we uh, don't act on this tonight? I kinda look, I'm kind of looking at this as, as like a, that probably uh, down the road when he comes up with his plan to fix the exterior of the building, if he applies for facade improvements, um, you know, come back and talk about some, of, maybe the landscaping to a certain extent could be um, uh, reinstalled as long as it works with his, you know, operation. In 1999, I don't think he was doing the emissions, right? No, sir. So the, the, the issue with the islands and now he has conflicts with some of the circulation, uh, maybe when he comes in, we talk about that again, or you have a condition on that that it comes he comes back, you know, in the summertime with a, a plan of attack for that. So um, I think his is he's eager, obviously, to get his permission to uh, get the license to sell the cars. I think a lot of these, as they were in the past, can be attached as conditions tonight, uh, subject to your satisfaction, which would then allow him to go forward uh, with his plans and. Uh, and whether you want to come back in the future with the landscaping is probably the un, the only issue that's unknown. I don't think the the pavement is not great, but I don't think it's inoperable. You can function without making the repairs to the pavement. Correct um, for now. For now, um, so I don't think that's the a deal breaker in terms of the in terms of the pavement anyway. So so you see a path forward where we could apply conditions not unlike the previous ones with some modifications yep. with landscaping to be determined at a later date or in consultation with town staff or give them a deadline to come in if you wanted to see it or if you wanted staff it's up to you how strong you feel about the mm. uh, there was a you know the 1999 plan had three islands um, he's now going to be parking in one of those islands if he's going to use the uh, uh, car display but he could but he could easily put islands on either end of the north and south side of the parking lot um, probably without huge impact to the to the emissions situation. So, I mean, you could do that as a staff condition, or you could have them come back in the future. It's probably something that's so minor that you could have staff uh, staff handle that. And also for snow removal and, and things like that, it, it's it's it just causes a, a big headache, uh, you know. And with the tractor trailers and and with all the trailers that are going in there, VIN verifications <coughs> and things like that for the motor vehicle. It just causes a big problem, and like I say, they haven't been there for eight years, so it's not like I went and did something wrong. I mean, no, no. The, the, the property's been <clears throat> been running, the establishment's been running like this for for eight years, and it's been running well. I mean, it's been running what better now that me and Shawnee are running the operation. Sean's been there for eighteen years, the gentleman in the in the, in the thing there and uh, uh, sitting. Um, Wait, that's, that's not the issue. The issue is. When, when somebody's proposing something new, it's right. the one and only opportunity for the community through its board. Sure, to, sure. To I, I would rather, the property, I, I, so. listen, so. I was in the flower business. I mean, I, I can get planters for you. I can do anything like the guy did on the Southern <laughs> Highway. I'll put planters out there where I can remove them come the snow fly, where I can push them around so it doesn't cause a problem. Because you have that island there, and you also push snow up on that island, then you cannot see down south now we're north or south okay you have dunkin donuts there they push their snow there too i take all my snow and i go from the front of the building to the back on, on seal and peace <laughs> so <laughs> i push it through it yeah, yeah. um so you know like i guess say the only reason why i'm here is is it's a great establishment I'm, we're making going to make it great again, and uh, 
<laughs> I, I just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, uh, so, yeah. Can I ask question? Peter to continue just the last section under the zoning enforcement officer's comments in yeah. regard to um, we've already talked about the buses, the other vehicles on the property, CLMP we've discussed, the dumpster issue we discussed. Is it required to have handicapped parking spaces also? Would that be? Is it required? Technically, uh, any parking lot where the public may come is, That's you know, okay. I don't, I don't even know if you're handicapped. You're probably not even handicapped accessible. I'm not but, even handicapped accessible. But I think if if the uh, ADA folks, I'm surprised the DMV didn't request. ADA yeah, no, they. The, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's been uh, prior. It's not there, grandfathered in. Probably, yeah. But you know, again, I met with Tommy Nevico the, yeah. this morning from General Paving, and uh, uh, again, I can I can have. I'll bet you could do something under the oh under the canopy under the can. Well, this is what I'm saying is under <clears> the canopies. <throat> throw two handicapped spots under the canopies, and James also brings the cars to the people. He walks the people out. You know, again, we're business friendly there. We're, we're, you know, we're a family down there. You know, Sean's been there for 18 years. You have to be. Uh, yes, I have to be, and, and also the staff should be too. The, the council should be too. How many people line up at it's any one time? A lot, a lot. Do you almost go out onto the side? You know, something. Sometimes there is. Yes. I mean, you might have five or eight of them. Sure. Why not? So, you know, you know why, why, why are you penalizing me for, for a striving business, you know? You've already did it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm just saying. I'm just telling you how it is. I mean, I... It looked crowded when I was... You, okay, business. thank you. I, I so, guess I'm doing pretty well there. Like so, so Tony, you want to finish? Uh, the north side of the building has some issues with the lawn area. Was that approved in 99, and is it something that... No, that was recently uh, done. Okay. Yep. Is, that, is that a positive or negative? Have a problem with that. It allows him. It somewhere. allows him to park his, uh, you know, staff vehicles in there. Okay. But okay. Um, so that wouldn't be a problem anyway. Huh? Um, and the, what what would their zoning enforcement officer want in details for the proposed car sales? Does he want a narrative paragraph? So I think or? you're hearing you're hearing tonight. Okay. Just just exactly what exactly what he how what many, he's asking. How many, how, how many cars a month do you think you would end up? It could be five. It could be ten. Okay. Again, I'm not there to sell cars. I'm, I'm there for the, and, and, and I'll tell you, uh, down the road, Sean's probably going to be here in two years. He's probably going to put gas back in there. Okay, that was one of my questions. Yes, so that's why the pumps are still there. That's why the canopy is still there. There's no reason to pull down $100,000 worth of uh, a canopy and, and, and pavement and things when Sean will be there for another 25 years. I won't be there, but he will. Where are you going? Don't you worry about where I'm going. <laughs> How about the, all the repairs will be inside the building? All the repairs are, all, unless you get a guy coming down, like the other day, Sean had to work on an Army trailer. A guy came down to, from Danbury. He had to come to the motor vehicle department. And he had to leave it over a week because we couldn't get to it in time. So he had to do the work outside. <laughs> the damn thing weighs a ton, too. We couldn't get it inside. But he had to work on it outside. There are going to be here and there cars you know, some opposing with a flat. Ninety-nine percent inside. Be inside. Yeah. Correct. I think you. And will. hopefully you won't drive by in that one percent. I will. No, I know you probably will. <laughs> yeah. Fix it on CLMP's property. No, for years I've been going there, and I, I didn't even want to. Go I don't. Inside. I never see you there. How come I, I don't? I didn't even see want you to there. go inside to sit down because it was uh, a mess. At least uh, you've cleaned that up. I okay, was there thank you. Last week. So. Yes. Thank so you. there is some. Some. What Greg is saying is somewhat legit. You know, I, I just do want to see if we could put bullets together and. Give some deliverables. Give them yep. a year to do it. Got to deliver at a certain time, and maybe revisit this. Fantastic! But that anyway, would be that would be great. Are you other, working with me? I work with you. Any other? Things? I think you, I'm just trying to make some notes. How many conditions we're up to? Um, give me a minute to itemize them here. Yeah. All right. So, are there? Let me let me open this up to the public. Is there anybody? Unless there's any additional questions, anybody have a problem with no. me turning around? Okay. I just have one. Here I'm, I'm quite confused at the moment. The application, according to you know, the documents that we were provided, indicates that the application is for a uh, general repairs li license and also um, automobile oh, sales, sales license. Uh, so there are, there are two such approvals that are being sought. Is that, and both 
Right? It, also, there's a question mark as to whether one or not is within the current jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission to act upon. The general pairing license uh, approval, and I think it's uh, from my reading of the documentation, indicates that what's needed for to maintain the general pairs license is the endorsement of that license uh, by this commission, possibly by the, the <coughs> Board of Zoning Appeals. I don't know which at this point this one. would apply. So this one. So we Both. need to endorse that application. Right. That's that's what Peter was implying, is that okay. we're, we're talking about sales and a general repair. And then license. there's the, the issue of the automobile sales, right. which is a separate and distinct application, in effect. Well, so two issues. It's part, it's part, I mean, it's part of this application. Correct. But it's a separate, distinct approval. Right. We will, we will make a motion eventually one way or the other, and it will be on those two issues. Okay. You know, and in hearing what's been said and, and what the current status and what, you know, the, the history of the property, particularly in the past, you know, 10 years or so, uh, my own inclination, I'm, I'd be glad to hear from any public input on this is to uh, in, you know endorse the general pair license but sales license I think is lacking you know until we have <clears throat> greater uh, you know uh, details and a, and a plan that meets all the requirements and specifications mm -hmm. for submitting you know a, 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 a professionally designed site plan that that provides for all the activity that's being proposed for the site. And, and that's sort of my, my inclination at this point in time. All right. Uh, so, Chair, thank you, Tom. And I have one or two more questions. Uh, Greg, could you tell us about lighting on the site? Are you, do you plan on enhancing the lighting at all as you're growing into the, the building and making it better? Uh, the you know, canopy. It's dark at, at 4.30. I'm wondering if it's the, Oh, I light that place up like a Christmas tree. That uh, the canopy has six um, uh, nitrogen or uh, gas. Gas. Shawnee, what what are what bulbs are in that thing? That gas. Those big. They're halogens uh, in 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 the canopy. There's six of them. Okay. You go so by there. Uh, I could turn them on for you. You want to drive by? You, it's you feel like that's a, sufficient. Oh, absolutely. How about Plenty. the emissions? What are the hours that the emissions? Is emissions open? are open from uh, Monday through Friday, eight to five, and on weekends they're eight to one. And it's state, that's state mandated for me. And how about the yeah. hours of the garage? What's the hours of the garage, we stayed the same as the emissions because, you know, we work hard all day. You know, you get, we get in there at 7 o'clock and, and uh, we start our hours of operation at 8 to 5. And we're shut down at 5 o'clock every night. You know, we're not there. You know, if, we're, if I'm there, I'll, I'm probably there with a plow truck, one of my own vehicles or one of my buddy's vehicles after hours. But other than that, our hours are 8 to 5. Monday through Friday. You mentioned two hundred thousand dollar improvements. Plus. I'm probably going to probably put all of that into all that of building. That in there and that yeah. Will, uh, be if you physical. don't approve me though tonight, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. But I mean, and it'll be look like Lamores next paving, week. Though. You're 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 bringing the new equipment inside, hoist lifts. We got brand new equipment in there now. Yes, we do. We have. Uh, That's uh, all taxable. Adding. Yeah, tax absolutely. Rates. You know, we have uh, all brand new equipment. Everything in there is brand new. And we plan on doing the same to the outside. We plan on paving the parking. We plan on putting the stripes in the parking lot. We, it, it, again, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be there. You guys want to come revisit it and say, you know, Greg, I, yeah, the lighting, yeah, it's great. Or, hey, let's do this. Let's do this. And we'll talk it over. We'll do it. It's not a problem. I mean, it's, like I say, Sean will be there for another 25 years. But I hear you won't. I won't. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming back here. <laughs> Greg, Greg, is 404 LLC just you, or is it a partnership it's with a Sean? It's a partnership, or? yes. It's a partnership. And what's the arrangement between the emissions in 404 LLC? Is uh, that a lease, a sublease? It's... Um, How does that work? It, we, we lease the equipment from uh, A+. Okay. And then we work for the motor vehicle department. <clears throat> and... Um, we have to go by their guidelines. We have three cameras in our in our operation for the people. When you're sitting inside our uh, uh, office, they need to see their vehicle being worked on. There's also three more cameras that are in the Bay Area that A plus at any time could punch us up on their computer and watch our technicians working. 
So it's a very it's a very uh, tight knit. You know, it's and those cameras are taxable. Those <laughs> everything is okay. yes, everything is you know, and, and I, again, I don't mind improving and selling the cars, and that's taxable. And doing all the facade work that uh, Peter told me that they still have that program going. I plan on doing all that. To How the, long has James been with you? James has been with me three years. Just uh, has he always had a sense of humor like he does. Yes, he has. Uh, if anybody hasn't met James, he, he, he has uh, three watches now. Okay, three. <laughs> three, not just two. He has three. He's entertaining. Yes. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. Is there anybody from the public who'd like to uh, ask a question or make a comment about this application? All right. I just oh, yep. okay. I mean, I, I, I just uh, hear, you, I hear you, a lot of going back. You, you, you need to kind of come up and give us your name and oh, yeah. <clears throat> so we can hear it and record it. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Cassio, 50 years old, Weathersfield resident, born and raised, still live here today. Uh, I am friends with Greg Lyshatz, and I've witnessed many projects that he's worked on in the past. I've seen <clears throat> successes all the way through what he's uh, put his mind to and his, and his hard work and work, work ethic too. Um, I, I hear tonight a couple of things. Um, tax revenues, car sales are taxable. It's revenue to the town. So <clears throat> the, the, the current status of the building, Greg is you know working on it. We've improved it. He's improved it, Sean. And I think this would be great to see the town of Wethersfield have a building that's been here so long, be improved, have this gentleman be successful, and I think the support of the staff should be behind him because he's only trying to help the town. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Sure. Come join us. Sean Derwin, I'm the mechanic at Weathersfield Automotive. Um, I did hear you say um, it, you know, the property has been a mess for 10 years. I'm not sure if you've seen it in the last 10 months. A lot has changed. So what he's doing is really working. Um, I'm not a resident of Weathersfield yet. I hope to be within the next year, if everything goes right. Um, other than that, see what the next 10 months bring the place to even look even better. Thanks. Sean, you're going to be here for a long time? I hope to be here for quite a long time. Quite a long time. He, he committed you. God he, he did commit you. Yeah. <laughs> 404 South Dean. If you need anything, let me know. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So nobody put their hand up at first, now all three of you. Greg's <laughs> fine. Tim Lambrick, 56. I live on Butternut Circle. I've been, up, been in town for 14 years. My wife grew up here. Um, I look forward to going to local businesses. I go through a lot of cars. I do appraisals. I do 50,000 miles a year. <clears throat> when I need a car, I want to buy it instantaneously. If you allow him to, to sell a couple cars, that's how I like to buy them, immediately. I don't like to go outside of town. I don't want to go to Rocky Hill. I want to stay in town. So I want to support what's here. I shop up and down Silestine on a daily basis, me and my wife. So I'm definitely for it. You know, let him be successful. He's beautifying the whole, you know, <clears throat> his building. Let him keep doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, hey. I just, Greg. I just had a yep, Greg, you want to come on back up and? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, Yolanda. Okay, so um, just a question, clarification. Um, I do want you to be successful. I think this whole commission is. <coughs> um, but it was helpful to know how you were envisioning the use of the property and the sales. So the way I understand it, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, you were planning on just having a couple cars in front, say two, yep. that would be for sale, 
and then you would just like leave them there like on they would just be like right on the front there wouldn't be a for sale sign or anything like that or well, like how do you envision this well I'm envisioning at least a for sale sign a small one you know the the, the standard size for okay. sale you know and in a, in a and there'll probably be it, it, on the 10 cars that are sitting here I mean, there might be one there too or two there sitting because the traffic mm -hmm. that goes through Dunkin Donuts is crazy if you ever went by there at 6 30 in the morning to 9 o'clock there's got to be 500 cars so when you're driving through Dunkin Donuts the 10 cars that I have sitting there in my building that's sitting there that this doesn't look that great now which will look better it's going to invite those people from Dunkin Donuts to there and there might be those two cars over there might not be there they might be over here or three cars might be over here I don't need to have them up front because okay. then I got to move them because when the trucks come in and the big trailers come in that's where they go and they go sweep back out so they, they probably won't be there you know but you know you know so what I'm saying so you're saying that it, you're picturing just a couple cars. A couple cars here and there, yeah. Putting yeah. them somewhere. Yeah. I'm not going to yes. limit you. I, 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 you, know, you know, you can't limit me to say I'm going to leave the two there. I'm going to, I'm probably not going to have them there for a while. But there'll be a couple cars, cool. and you're picturing like a little sign. So this little small, that little for sale sign. I'm not going to go like the guy in the thing, 300 cars in stock. <laughs> Down on the South in High, uh, Brown Turnpike. 300 cars in stock. That's what he has, Masaz and Howie. But, do you, but you understand I won't do that. Though. I won't do but that. You yes. Oh, I understand. I, I, yes, I do. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to get crazy down there. I'm not, you know, it's going to be nice. You know. You mentioned five or ten before. Well, you want to give me five or ten? I'm, I'm going to go for five or ten. You want to give me 20? I'll go for 20. No, I don't think so. George, right. that was, that was, George, when he said that, <laughs> George, when he said that, that was how many he might sell in a month's in a time. Month. He might sell what? In when a month. He, when he said five to ten, that, that was how many he might sell in an entire month. I, I would love five. to sell. I would love to sell, George. I'd love to sell a hundred for you. So then, I, and then you can make more money in the tax you revenue. Just don't so. want to keep them there for three months. I don't want them there for more than three days, if possible. <laughs> yeah, you don't want a big display. Or no, no, no. You don't have the room. Okay. You really don't. Right, George. No, I know. So, what are you going to do about the buses? That's my other buses question. will be out of there before the snow, not before this Friday, but before the big snow flies. Oh, I, I should have the parts term, in. Then, same as, Excuse me? They're the short term then. The oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's short term. That's, that's not, yeah, yeah. So, I'm not going to decline somebody if I can't work on their vehicle. No, we just, I have boats I down there. I do. I don't want a lot of unregistered vehicles sitting no, here waiting. No, absolutely not, sir. No. And, and, and if they are unregistered and they're, my vehicles, they're going to be nice vehicles. They're not going to be junks. So, really. All right, so let, let's circle back um, because I, I appreciate that clarification because I, I thought in my mind the applicant was hearing the criteria uh, of the place on Maple and was probably okay with that. So, so the purpose of the Maple Street, yeah. as I recall back from 2007, was we didn't want to be widely publicized that we're selling cars on the side could, because one turns into two, turns into three, and the next thing you know, you know, you could have a governor's, Governor Avenue from East Hartford sitting here on the Silestine Highway, right? That's not what we wanted as a commission representing the town of Wethersfield. So, so there is no advertising, zero, on the cars, and that's what I thought we were talking about. So I appreciate you bringing that topic up again. Um, so... Let's talk that through. So, Mr. Chairman, one thing, a and, caveat. And on we that were issue living in it. And we, I want to be sure he doesn't go to the ZBA and ask for 40 cars in that one. 50. Which he could. They did that over. <laughs> hey, you got, you got 50 cars over there right now. Yeah, which which we'll have to deal with by another process. Sure, right? absolutely. And, that, and that's staff's problem. Right. I mean, so, so the constraints that we're talking about today are limited to your property. So this means Correct. that as we talk about 10 or 12 or 16 vehicles, whatever the heck the number ends yeah, up yeah. being, it's your property. It's not back on CLMP. You don't get to put another Correct. 40 back on CLMP because you've got no right to be but, there. So those are the constraints that we're talking about can, here. Can so I it's add, your property only. Can I ask you a question, though? You're going to limit me to – sorry, guys. You'll, you'll get out of here soon. You're going to limit me to say, if I'm saying to you now uh, 20 cars a month, what if all of a sudden – you say to yourself, all you guys say, Jesus, boy, I can get a cheap car down at Greg's place. 
And I'll let you come down next week, and I sell 10 cars next week. Now I have to say to everybody, hey, I won't have cars until next month. You know, you know what I'm saying? So you li you're, you're limited to me, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll accept it, but I'm going to tell you, if, if all of a sudden all my buddies and, 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 and people that I've been doing business with for years and years and say, hey, Greg's got cars down there now, and I, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'd sell two today. I sell two tomorrow. I sell two the next day. I sell a and, one. I sell one. I, I sell think, one. And I think, what you, I think what I can say, this commission in the past yeah. hasn't wanted that to happen on the Silas Dean Highway. I, no, but I'm not regardless, saying displaying it. Regardless of why. Correct. Right? Correct. But I'm, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is, is I don't want to be... I'll take the limit to the to the 15, 20 cars a month. It Not started a at five, you know. It started at five to ten. Well, You're quite the negotiator. Well, five to ten, uh, that was going to display. Like used car I, I was going to display to five or ten, but that's okay. You, you, uh, listen, why don't we do this? It would be a lot easier for all of us. You know, w let's, you just tell me what you would like from me. I will work with you on that. Let's get the license in there. Let's get the building improved, so, and we'll move on. Fine. Okay. Let us, that? let us start talking because I, I do want to get to one point that Tom brought up. Tom is, is uncomfortable without having further documentation from the applicant where uh, others of us might well be, um, myself included, uh, okay with crafting something and, and letting it uh, move forward. But I don't think we want to close the hearing, which is the next step, if we're going to tell the applicant <coughs> to go right. back. Is that right? So, so let's have a dialogue about whether we think we're in that position at this point before we close the hearing. Is that reasonable? Yeah, yeah we should figure out where we are. Right. Uh, so, so let me ask you a question. So the guy on the, on the Brown Tarp, when he came to you, how many times did he come back to you for 50 cars? He doesn't have 50 cars. There's not 50 cars right. down here? He's I beg to differ with you. No, I didn't say there weren't 50 cars. Okay. But I'm just asking you a question. I, I want to get this done tonight, if possible, because it, it relies on, right. like you say, a tax basis. It, it relies on myself, my people that work for me. Right. And, and, I, and it's not a big thing to ask. And the only reason why I'm coming to the town is because the motor vehicle has to say to you, yes, you're allowed a dealer's license. I could come to you right now and, and say to you, I want one car. One car, give me one car a month. Would you, be, would you agree to that? Because the motor vehicle doesn't care. As long as you say you're a dealer, right. I can get a dealer's license. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to, I'm here to make this, my business flourish in this town. If you, don't want, if you don't want to give it to me, you don't give it to me. Rich, I, Rich. I, guess, I guess, you know, to answer your question about the guy on the Berlin Turnpike, right. and this is my opinion, um, our zoning regulations don't allow the outdoor sale of cars. I mean, which is why the Maple Street restriction was the way it was. It, it, that guy went to the ZBA and applied for a use variance. Our regulations require use variances to be referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission before they can be granted. It was not referred to this commission before it was granted. Our regulations prohibit the issuance of use variances for uses that are prohibited throughout the town. The outdoor sale of motor vehicles is prohibited throughout the town, so it was illegal on that count too. He came in here basically for a site plan after all of that was approved. We approved that with a number of conditions that he has routinely violated, and it expired August 1st, so I frankly don't think the Berlin Turnpike is a legitimate example if you're advocating for the right to do something. I mean, that's, right. that's my so, opinion. So you're only measuring stick. Don't measure yourself by what Berlin Turnpike is doing because <laughs> it's not appropriate. What yeah. is and has been approved by us is the Maple Street. That is the model by which we have already approved something. So <clears> then, <throat> then let's go by that model then. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. That, that, is, that is kind of what I was getting sure. at. Sure. I mean, so that's I, why I appreciate Yolanda bringing up I mean, what your expectations <clears throat> right. were because I was I mean, thinking no sales sign because, again, outdoor sales is not allowed. Well, if you drive up and down the South Zine Highway, I, I, can, I, can take, I took pictures and, and a lot of people have taken pictures and showed me, you know, in front of the car wash, in front of the mobile station, in front of uh, many places there's cars for sale, cars for sale, cars for sale. <clears throat> How do you stop that? I'm, I'm here asking you, I'm asking you for permission to do it the right way. 
Now, are you going to come down to my shop and I'll put 10 cars out front and I'll put four sales signs on them? I, I, am I going to get fined for that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's the fine going to be? Do you know what that? For, oh, right. for you, Greg? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is here's you weigh it out. Uh, uh, I hear I'm asking you for permission. I'm doing it the correct way. Right. Give me the give me that opportunity to show you that I can do this. If not, I'll park ten cars down there. I'll make a thousand dollars on every car, and he can give me a hundred dollar ticket a day. Doesn't matter to me. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all I'm asking exactly you for what you're saying. just okay. just stop. Though. Uh, okay, I'm just saying. I, and I don't want to do the rain. I don't want to do that. Totally understands what you. Just okay. Said. All right. Thank good. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question. The, uh, so the Maple Street, we had a restriction of three cars per month. Is there a reason why it was per month and not stored on the property at one time? That was the way the applicant. Uh, does it? Because does that really? Yeah, I wouldn't. Way? I wouldn't do I it that way. Because how often they turn? Yeah, over. and we're sells, not going to be able to. If he sells a hundred cars, and we're just saying. But you can only Two have spaces. Have so correct. That's right. that's correct. You're, that's uh, he got so, it. He's got it. That's so what I'm concerned I'm sorry, about. Yes, so we're that's, not yeah. necessarily following up. So no, that was what that guy offered. Right. That's he what said, yeah. I'm only going to do like that's, two or three a month. Right. You know, right. it's like, okay. You, we, so, so we put, so we put that box around it. So we can stop talking about limiting the per month. Per and month. Just maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh, right. How many cars <laughs> at one time <laughs> we want on this I should have hired a lawyer. And, come and maybe, right. And maybe how me. many cars on the property, no unregistered and for sale on the property. Put the box around that. Yeah, so what's the... Okay. What's a... What's a good number for you guys? <laughs> Personally, it's under five for me. Okay, perfect. Five. Perfect, George. I was thinking four or five, yeah. Perfect. Sounds great to me. Because then, if he wants to, and I guarantee, George, I guarantee you, you come there in ten months, and you're going to see a great. Well, ten months. Hold on, uh, twelve months. You're going to see a great difference down there. So, okay. You had something to say, Mr. Chairman. I thought I heard the number two to begin with. <laughs> and, and, right. And I, well, right. I mean, and and I, I'm not. I have only one vote, right? My, my perception is that I'm in a position, going back to what we need to decide to do next, I'm in a position to be okay saying, put these parameters around it. I don't need a plan to show me where the 12 spots are or 14 spots or five spots are. Um, quite frankly, uh, we can refer, in my mind, back to the 99 plan, all right, and put the parameters on that. Uh, and I can see myself coming to a resolution tonight. You have suggested otherwise. I'd like other people to weigh in because we really shouldn't close the, the process, right, without, without resolving that. Because if he's got to come back next week, we don't want to open a new hearing. You want a motion to continue this? Uh, Not necessarily. I want to know whether you can see your way clear to vote. I'm coming to the today. ZBA on the 18th. I would rather have you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm Mr. sorry, Mr. Mr. Would you mind if Peter gave us the List. bullets of attention and we'll see after he reads... If Peter has. I'm okay with that. We'll see if Greg is comfortable with that. Has any comment to that? And then as board, we can do, do discuss it further. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ready? This is a 15 suggested conditions here. Um, <laughs> okay. You wanted it, so here it comes. Okay. Um, 12 from 10, we're going to go up to 12 uh, designated parking spaces on site. Um, the pavement markings for the driveway directional arrows. Uh, the dumpster and screening, uh, pavement repairs, uh, the parking stalls all striped. Uh, in addition, the uh, at one point there was a, a designated lane painted on the pavement for the emissions to keep people with the, out of the parking stalls. So, so uh, in addition to the parking, have the emissions striped added. Um, work out the planting plan, uh, landscape islands with staff. Uh, number six, no parking of unregistered vehicles except for the occasional one day, one or two day event. No junk cars uh, outside. Uh, and you can discuss this uh, as you see fit. Number eight, uh, two cars uh, on display for sale. Uh, minimal advertising, limits approved by the zoning officer. Number nine, no outside accumulation of unused tires. 10, no outside storage of auto parts. 11, no debris left outside. 12, no repairs outside. 13, handicap space designated to the satisfaction of the building official. 14, um, 
14 removal of uh, uh, the vehicles and debris from the CLMP property and then 15 this approval uh, shall be granted for a one-year period of time and renewed uh, at the end of that uh, request for renewal can be submitted at the end of that one-year period the only other one I had was the dumpsters I had that in there yep. I think that was more than 15 Peter might be 16 <clears throat> pretty close pretty it's, close so it starts with the 11 that were in the previous uh, one right so and, and, a, and a couple extra added all right so I appreciate that so going back to my question um, and Tom raises a concern is are others like him wanting to see a plan that describes that or are you comfortable referring basically back to the 99 permit continuation of etc I mean if he has a plan now the application that he goes through for any of the facade stuff like are there enough unknowns that it would change a plan that we would get anyway or not? is that not I guess I'm, I'm asking more more him than I think it's really I mean you you had the eight and a half by eleven yeah uh, right there is a there's a base plan that we have on file um, I don't know that we would get a all you get amount more detail from all, a plan no because most of these are basically terms and conditions they don't really relate to the plan and we do have a plan on file that shows where the striping should be it shows where the parking stall okay, should yeah. be so we really have that on file and um, I, I don't think anything in terms of these conditions graphically is really going to change the, the intent words, of the, the permit. words cover all the work that he needs to do I, I, mr. chairman pretty much you know given the, the the description of the conditions offered by the town planner I'm reasonably satisfied with, uh, particularly with regard since the uh, the applicant has stated that he's going to be making many improvements over the course of the next year having the permit uh, and, and our approval limited to one year you know in essence to see what happens yeah. and having and essentially forcing the applicant back again <clears throat> a, in a year and he'll be judged based upon his compliance with these conditions I think that that you know that provides adequate protection and, and, I, uh, and I, I that tends to satisfy my concerns all right thank you does everybody else generally feel that way and if so yeah. then I think we can yeah. move to close sure. the hearing because yeah. it sounds sure. like people thank are ready you. to box thank this you. right okay so unless there's any more comments from the public you can all throw up your hands again and go <clears throat> um, do I have a motion on the public hearing motion to close second thank you both uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye I will note that that Yolanda joined us so there are nine of us all, right. all affirmative okay so the hearing is closed so so we just heard a, a bunch of draft comments uh, draft uh, conditions um, in particular I heard uh, limited limited signage per the zoning enforcement officer um, Justin gonna go come on you threw it all on my shoulders I think Greg just suggests he's just standard, gonna have a little standard tiny uh, for, sale. for sale you buy it at the hardware store sale. kind of thing yep, I mean buy, buy right. right at uh, Joe's right. place right everybody comfortable with that I'm, I'm, I mean yeah. when I listen to the 16 there's a couple that you know we were talking with about. regards to that specific issue I think the the the, the statement of the conditions indicates that those well, for sale signs are going to have to receive the approval of the zoning enforcement officer I'm, I, okay. I, I, okay. I tend to, would t tend to rely upon you know, the, the sensibility and expertise of our town officials to be able to come up with a reasonable okay. resolution of that issue the other one was unregistered vehicles except for a couple days at a time is it um, those are the, <laughs> those are the cars that are you know available for sale so, yep yeah the only reason I don't like two is because then if he has two, he can't go to auction and bring one back and store it on his property for a customer who takes a day or something to come and take a look at it. So that 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 was my only reasoning for going up. So like that was the third issue I want to talk about. The yeah. two, right? So yeah. there's a number two at that. Yes, that two cars designated for sale at any time. And and all I know is I want it to be a low number on a person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Minimum of two. No more Is than two. Zero. If he doubles that or which is four, yeah. go with three. I like four better. Wait, yeah. what two. Is this? Four, four, three, four, four down here. Oh. Tom thought two. All those in favor of two say all right. <laughs> that. Uh, one question with regards to that. Those are still going to be part. Those 
you know, whether it's two or four, are going to be parked in you know, Prom two or four of those Anywhere. parking Prom spaces that are supposed to be there. Right, wherever you want. Correct. Either, yeah. either in the front okay. or in front of okay. Duncan, okay. wherever. Right. Duncan is the better place. So to put them in. whatever, <laughs> whatever <laughs> parking spaces are, are going to be there, created, yeah. that are going to be designated you know, lawfully space. designated and, yeah. and enforced by the town, that's the maximum number of par total parking spaces, whatever the status of the vehicles that are parked Correct. in those spaces. Okay. So Correct. those are the three primary ones that I thought we wanted to talk about. We didn't really come to a resolution on the number, but let's, let's move this forward by somebody making a motion that encapsulates Peter's 16 comments. And then we'll be I'll make the motion resolved. to approve application number 1964-17Z for Weathersfield Automotive LLC. Um, for the permit 5.2E uh, for regulations of continued use of a general repairers and automobile <coughs> sales at 404 South Street. With, with reference to the 16 bullets as read into the record. Okay. The motion's on the table. I'll second. Thank you. Okay. So and the, and the, three. the conditions were 12 parking spaces. You want to get, you want to go to the meaty ones? You get the 12? 12 parking spaces designated. Okay. Uh, various, um, you know, pavement markings. Uh, there's yeah. a couple of conditions on that. The planting island uh, subject to staff approval. Um, you, you, I don't know how you want to handle the unregistered vehicle thing, but um, that was one that there was a question. Un yeah. Four. Four. Uh, um, What's so the big deal? Huh? Just that. Oh, so no one, one how more. About no no, how about no thing? unregistered vehicles that aren't for sale? Kind of thing. <laughs> that aren't for sale. Okay, combine combine that. That aren't for sale. Okay. Uh, that aren't for sale. Oh, for sale. Sorry. Uh, but, you know, you, you brought up a good point. I mean, you got two on a lot. You got to go get two more. You bring them back. You got four sitting there, and the two are going that day. I mean, again, whatever you guys want. So then, I'm saying, I don't want to hamstring them with. Right. right. So I want him to be able to have his so, minimum. So we'll get to the okay. We'll get to the number. So four four cars for sale. All right. Minimal advertising subject to ZEO approval, and then the rest of it was no outside storage on you know all that kind of stuff. Um, one year approval. One year approval. I'm fine with that. The one year approval. So those are, those are the biggies. I thought we talked about like a four year approval. Was that f have four out there? Technically, the hearing is closed. But. You're right. going to be making so much Four. money they want to get another now, George. Talking to say, Come on now. George, George, George. The hearing's closed. We're trying to stop that. Conversation. <laughs> you want to see what it looks <laughs> like. You're talking to yourselves over there. You watch. So you give it when you talk to us. I'm going to go see so Peter four. in two months to right. to to four to, is to, to uh, so do we this. We got four vehicles. We got four vehicles. Four order, Mr. Chairman. I think you know the, there's resolution on the floor. Uh, there is you know that's been moved and seconded. That resolution, you know, specifically incorporates the, uh, you know, the statement of conditions <coughs> as read by the town planner. That statement included the two vehicles. If you wanted to do four, we'll get, yes, we're going to get there. there has I'm going to ask the two of them. You know, a, a, a request for, uh, you know, to the mover of that motion to allow. Yes. Uh, you know that uh, modification of the resolution. Underst understood. That was that's where I was getting at. I just wanted to get the changes, and I think the four is all that we're talking about at this point, right? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So fine. you made the motion. Uh, Tony made the motion. Yeah. I, Are you I, okay with the four I, and the one year? I, yeah, I, I thought two was fine, but I have no problem with four, especially right. after we talked about it. Nor I think that. And who seconded it? I did. Uh, I'll, I, I'll concur with uh, Tony on that. Okay. All right. I'm okay with that. Is everybody okay with the whole motion? Yeah. Four in one year. I just don't like the signs. I'm fine with the number, fine with the concept. Yeah. I won't but let you sign, down. But the sign Come is for per, per staff or zoning, the out, zoning officers. Yeah, but, but we know what's going to come, right? You're going to get, so you know, that something like that. That makes me no, I know what to. I know no, what I'm, we're going to get. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and we're probably going to get a request from the other applicant or it's from the other property owner down the street too eventually right they got to come right. here and ask for it now you're gonna how are you gonna say no right it's yeah. one year we could say no in a year if it doesn't work out I, I, I guess that's true 
Okay. Well, I mean, if we're going to say yes to everybody, we might as well have regulations that allow it and have yeah. criteria. First place. Rather yeah. than we did discuss this faking it until we make it. We yeah. spent 15 months on the 10 year master plan of conservation and development. And I think this came up at least three times that I can remember. Hmm. We debated it. It was a lengthy discussion when he came back the second and third time on the Berlin Turnpike. We wrestled with it. Uh, we want to revisit it a year from now and say, no, no. But shame, but shame on us. My thoughts. All right, we have a motion. It's been seconded for four signs, one year. Those are the primary ones, right? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. One. No. One, two in opposition, seven approved. All righty. The, the no's are George and George Rich. And George, George Oichel and Rich. It's only the signs that have the problem with. I'm struggling with it myself. Right now. It's done. Done. You're done. Beautiful. Good. Thank you very much, staff. I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. <laughs> okay. Next item on the agenda. Uh, could I have a mo Can we hear these together? Any reason why we can't? No. We can no, we did it last time. Right, okay. So can I have a motion to hear the next uh, items 3.2 and 3.3 together? So moved. Uh, can I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Tony. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. So the next items on the agenda 3.2 and 3.3, a public hearing for application 1966-17Z. And application 1967-7, oh, they're both the same? Exactly the same? Is that right? 66 and 67. Oh, I said them wrong. Okay, 66 and 67, thank you. Um, Denise Patel seeking a special permit to modify application 741Z uh, uh, <laughs> and a resubdivision of uh, the other, whatever. <laughs> the, the, uh, the agenda speaks for itself. Hey, anyway. welcome back. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Nathan Kirshner. I'm a project manager with Langen Engineering out of New Haven, Connecticut. Um, I guess first and foremost, to, uh, to start on a light note, I met Attorney Hammer, so I will no longer confuse him with Mr. Roberts, uh, as I did during the previous application. He's sitting in my right seat. I noticed that as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> I did, did have a few, few laughs about that with Joe, though. Um, I guess I was planning to start off with the subdivision. I'll kind of just snowball the whole application. Uh, as I had promised back in July when I was in front of the board previously, uh, we would be back to amend the site plan application uh, specific to the gas station tenant. Uh, the rendering in front of the commission this evening uh, currently is the previous approval. Um, I'll kind of walk everybody through where we were uh, and what's changed. Um, obviously, in addition to the amended special permit application, um, we are here for a subdivision application. Subdivisions pretty bland, I could probably handle that in about five minutes if there wasn't anything else tied to it, but uh, I'll, I'll do it all at once for, for overall efficiency's sake. Uh, the property is eight, currently 1881 Berlin Turnpike. Uh, in the plan in front of you, uh, Berlin Turnpike north is up, Berlin Turnpike's to the east, Arrow Road uh, abuts the northern property line. Um, there is a small frontage along Russell Road, uh, and then it's a uh, undeveloped land to the south of the property to re-familiarize everybody with the location. Cumberland Farms is the uh, northern side of the, the intersection for additional reference point. Um, the previous application was for uh, special, it was a special permit application for the development of a self-storage facility. It was a 30,000 square foot footprint, uh, three stories, so a total 90,000 gross floor area uh, on the western portion of the property. Uh, if people are familiar with the site, it's got a pretty significant grade change that we talked about uh, at length. I can get back into that again uh, if the commission so desires. Um, but ultimately, the site was split. There was a large retaining wall. It's uh, proposed to be a large masonry block retaining wall. Um, the lower portion that fronts the Merlin Turnpike, uh, again, the previous application proposed a 2,950 square foot convenience store with a, I'm trying to link five pump, 10 unit gas, uh, 10 gas pumps with under a kind of a, a unique, uh, unique shape canopy. Um, 
there's a term for that. I was just doing geometry with my daughter, but now it escapes me. Um, as I had indicated in that previous application, the intent was to get an application in front of the commission. Um, there is a tenant, as I understand it, for the self-storage facility. There was a tenant, I should say. There currently are tenants for both properties. Uh, I'm not privy to who the self-storage facility tenant is at this point, so there's currently no signage discussions, no signage applications with respect to that tenant. Um, I'm actually here on behalf of the owner as well as the tenant for the gas station this evening, which is Petrogas Northeast uh, LLC. Um, their local name, I guess their northeast name uh, for this property is Apple Green Gas. Uh, I'm not too familiar with any of them in the area, but I have, I'm aware that they are expanding in the region. So say that again. What's the name of the it, station? The, the signage will be Apple Green. Yeah, if, oh, so, not uh, 7. 7 Eleven will be, so the, the gas company would be Apple Green. The convenience store itself would be a 7 Eleven. The sign will reflect that? And the sign will reflect, well, the signage is. Um, not part of the application right now. Uh, we did present it to DRAC. They had some comments. We've separated out the signage and are planning to submit a separate application. But ultimately, as I understand it, the uh, the signage that they will propose will reflect both the 7-Eleven logo as well as the Apple Green logo. Um, I don't know if it will be myself or a sign, someone from the sign company doing the applications with respect to the signage. Um, so <coughs> don't quote me, but that's my understanding at this time. Um, I guess moving forward with a, a tenant with specific operational demands, we've uh, revised the development on the eastern portion of the site, the gas station. Um, I, I guess it's important at this point to note nothing has changed on the self-storage facility. The square footage has stayed the same, the curb cuts have stayed the same, the grading has stayed the same, utilities, drainage, not a single thing has changed on that property. Uh, at one point, the previous application did have a proposed property line um, tied to that. Due to time constraints, we withdrew any applications for the subdivision and permitted the whole thing as a single lot. Um, okay, the curb cut to the stain and everything? Nothing has changed on the self-storage facility. Uh, on one the of the south? Uh, on the west, correct. Or, uh, on the west, know. correct. Nothing has changed there. Uh, I actually had conversations with Mr. Gillespie if it made sense to actually subdivide the property and then s simply permit the gas station. Uh, as a separate application once it was a subdivided parcel. His recommendation was because it's a pretty clear two projects uh, and the commission would kind of understand how things have evolved and the history is it's less than 12 months old that I was here before. Um, so his ad advice was to come in, do the subdivision, do the special permit revision all in one shot and save everybody some time and listen to me ramble for an extra night or two. So uh, going forward, And it occurs to me now I probably should have put the boards on separate boards um, so there could have been an easier comparison. The, again, the only changes are to the eastern lot, uh, the gas station. It's a rectangular canopy. Uh, again, the changes are driven by operational needs of the tenant. Uh, it's a larger convenience store. It's um, increased from a 2,950 square feet to, we'll call it approximately 3,700 square feet. I think it's 3,696 36, for accurate square footage. Um, they've, we've tucked it down into the south, southwest corner of that proposed lot B, um, provided some additional parking so that we are compliant with the parking re regulations for the larger building. Um, and then with the rectangular canopy, we'll see if the mic picks me up. The, the, the main operational driver for this layout was they wanted vehicles to be able to come in and move through the pumps in, a, in essentially a, a pretty straight. The, if you remember, the original orientation had the pumps flipped, so you'd be coming in, coming this way, coming out and around. So it was a larger, uh, more complicated movement. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the operator wanted that more direct route through the site. Um, we've, because of the rectangular shape, we've added a pump. Um, it does have a slight, because the trip generation is based on pumps, there's a slight increase. It's about a 15% increase in anticipated traffic. There's a supplemental traffic memo that should be part of the application. Um, again, we are on the Berlin Turnpike. So the- What happens when you stack up on uh, Arrow Road? The, well- How are you gonna cross that traffic? Or Cumberland coming out, the opposite? 
directly opposite you? They're not. They're they're actually closer to the intersection. A little closer. Okay. They are a little closer to the intersection. Yeah, they are they are staggered slightly. Um, you know the. The expectation in a lot of the discussions, as I, I believe, hopefully most commissioners remember, is to capture southbound traffic. Obviously, you can, there's, that's, there's nothing to say that you can't go back to the light and head northbound on the Berlin Turnpike, but typical gas station users are headed southbound. They see the light. They realize they need gas. They either take a right in at the light or they take a right in at the right in, the dedicated right turn lane, and then they continue on their southbound route. Um, <clears throat> I don't have the trip distribution in front of me, but it does greatly favor southbound traffic. Um, we did look at the queue, queuing uh, with respect to th that signal. Uh, there were a lot of comments last time around from the residential abutters with concerns regarding that. Um, the slight increase from what was previously proposed is, is negligible. Uh, signal timing, the modifications aren't warranted. Traffic still functions as it did pre per our previous approval. Um, with respect to, I guess, the subdivision, because we only br briefly talked about it, the proposal is simply to draw a line to separate the two lots. Um, we received comments from Mr. Gillespie as well as Mr. Greger, the town engineer. Um, we've addressed those comments. I don't know if those made it into the packet. Um, the only outstanding comment was from Mr. Greger regarding the proximity of the retaining wall to the proposed property line. He suggested either relocating the property line or relocating the wall so that the footings and the foundations for that wall are all on one property. Um, as part of our comments addressing the special permit application, uh, we are shifting the wall. Uh, just due to the building locations, we can't move the property line. So the subdivision will remain as currently proposed. The wall does have some wiggle room and can shift to the west to put those foundations completely on the uh, self-storage facility property. Um, as consistent with the previous application, we are requesting three waivers. Um, actually, I guess, let me, I'll finish the subdivision application. The only, I guess, point of clarification, and to be very candid, I'm not sure it matters uh, other than a clerical matter. Um, th there's a recurring comment regarding the front yard setback. Uh, being labeled as a front yard setback versus a side yard setback. I haven't heard feedback, and Mr. Gillespie, I don't know if, if you can clarify the matter now. My interpretation, or I guess my understanding from conversations with the zoning enforcement officer was per the code, the narrowest street frontage would be defined as your front yard. In the unsubdivided condition, and this is consistent with the previous application, in the unsubdivided condition, the narrowest frontage was actually along Russell. Um, so despite the Berlin Turnpike being your major arterial road, based on definitions, your front yard would be Russell. In the subdivided condition, your narrowest frontages are Russell in the Berlin Turnpike. Arrow would be treated as a side yard. So in terms of defining lot frontage, that is correct. The narrowest is the lot frontage. However, um, corner lots uh, always have two front yards. So. Uh, and, and the front yard setback and the side yard setback are 25 feet. So and, it really and that's doesn't why, right. matter. It's so a matter it's, of changing the word on the plan. It's a matter of labeling it, just changing it from side to front. So I talked to him today about that, and uh, it should be labeled a front yard. So Certainly. So, yeah, again, there's no dimensional issue. There's no additional waivers or variances, or, or it doesn't trip us up with any additional requests. It's just a, a clerical matter, but it is 25 feet regardless. Um, the two subdivided lots meet all the bulk requirements. It, it, with, without discussing the developments, they meet all the bulk requirements. The only existing nonconformity would be the frontage along Russell is 97 feet. Uh, minimum required is 100 feet, just to clarify that point. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that. Um, we did talk about that, that at the last application, but um, just, just a, a, a note for the commission. Um, Right, as I said, with the subdivision, it's uh, unless Mr. Gillespie has something to add, I, d I don't know. There's much more to say about it, really. So we talked about the retaining wall issue. It, there is this; these two properties are likely to be owned at the end of the day by two different entities. That's correct. So um, as it stands now, the front's being leased. So I, I, I mean, yes, I, I can't say that they never would be one would never be sold. Um, there, there is that possibility. So probably be financed separately. Yes, yeah, so, so our concern is that um, on the retaining wall, in terms of the, obviously you guys will understand who's responsible, but uh, we wanted some notations, whether it's an easement or something on the plans indicating who is responsible for the retaining wall, given its proximity to the property lines. Obviously, doing any maintenance to it probably requires you to be on either 
property. Sure. So we wanted something in the subdivision plan to reflect the fact that uh, h however you guys are going to dispose of that so that it's uh, clear from, from this point going forward as to what those responsibilities are and who's responsible for maintaining the wall. So that was why we had the comments on, particularly on the retaining wall. So whether, whether it moves or whatever, we weren't really concerned about that. We just wanted those responsibilities to be defined by somebody. Certainly. Um, the, and our, the director of our survey department and I, as well as a couple of land use attorney colleagues, not Attorney Hammer in this case, um, did discuss the matter. And quite frankly, in, it, it behooves the property owners in the town really to make those reciprocal easements as opposed to defined easements on, on the plan. Uh, we'd be happy to condition the approvals that when the properties are subdivided, there's deed you know, there's uh, language put into the deeds regarding that. Um, if you define the easement area and say 10 years forward from now, the gas station goes out and somebody repermits that site, that defined easement area could no longer work with respect to, to, the, to the maintenance. Uh, similarly, the only other item identified was the drainage swale that goes from the western property line to the mm -hmm. eastern. Um, it would just be a right to drain yep. as well as a right to maintain that would be incorporated into the deed language. Um, for the same reason, the drainage, if either property was redeveloped in a different manner, that right would still be there, but that defined area might not be applicable. So mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't, in, as long as the commission and town feel that that's appropriate, it wouldn't be a revision to the subdivision plan itself. It would be something that would be a condition of approval incorporated into the deeds. And as long as the conditions of approval are on the map, that's fine with us. We just want something sure. to be there for somebody's uh, edification. I mean, you could make the easements wide enough where you're going to cover it no matter where you end up putting the, you know, the specifics. So, I, I mean, it's yeah, six I, of one. I guess my concern would be building, again, not knowing. I don't want to come back here in five years with another developer and have a building, be proposing a building in that easement, having to abolish an easement and reestablish a new easement. So um, hmm. it's our experience. It's just a little cleaner to do it with language within the deed. So how, <clears throat> so how do you make the, the town, when do we see it, right? Um, do we also approve the conveyance documents the, in the deed? No. So we would never see it, so. Unless you make that a condition. It will be staff. It wouldn't unless you uh, you don't normally get involved in, you know, that level of detail after right. the fact. So right. I mean, I understood your comment from the work that I do that you draw the easement yeah. areas on the on the map that sure. gets filed on the land record. Uh, standard, in, in, yeah. yeah. In particular, given that you're suggesting we don't see the language of the actual transfer document. Um, how, the the town would though, as I as I correct. As part of the, I mean, in, in filing with land records. <clears throat> file it, but we don't, you don't worry, look okay. at it, review it, approve it, sure. have the town attorney look at it. So I, I defer to the legal minds here as to, you know, how, how you think we should dispose of this. Normally we would have, you know, a, a right to drain area on the plan. We would have an easement on the property line, 10 feet either side or something like that, that spells out this area subject to whatever. Um, but that's kind of what we were recommending. Yeah, I mean that's 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 what typically my experience would would uh, typically call for. Sure, and we're not we're not saying we're not opposed to that. We just wanted to talk it out. <clears throat> okay, um, um, and, and also, voice our concern. I'm sorry about it. Okay, but also uh, with respect to that retaining wall, were you saying that you'd put the footing uh, completely on one property, so the easement is just for maintenance? And Correct. It would be a it would be a maintenance easement. That when we relocate the wall, so it's entirely on one property, there would be a maintenance easement allowing access to that wall from on the, front the other side on the other property correct right just like we would do on the highway plans yolanda yep. mm -hmm. and so how do you have to shift that retaining wall over more we have enough room i'm we, thinking towards the correct we have enough room to, to shift the wall slightly it towards to the, the storage facility to the west to the storage facility correct mm -hmm. and then we can't pull it closer to the building it'll it's, so, it's so just the wall the wall is owned by the storage facility correct right. and the easement is on the back of the 7-eleven correct and that doesn't compromise the the movement and the parking on the storage facility? No, we have enough green space where we can maintain the trees that the commission had requested at our previous, as part of our previous application. We can maintain those trees. We can slide the, the wall. I mean, it's only a couple feet we need to okay. move it. It's not but I'm just thinking feet. maneuvering like when you're parking your car and none of the, the none of the, directional. Quite frankly, none of the pavement's going to change. Uh, the wall itself. Can you show me where the wall is again, please? The wall's here. 
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, I thought it was closer. Oh, okay. Um, so the storage building above that is 12 feet from the property line. So there's 12 feet in there to to work. That, that, <coughs> yeah, the, yeah, the, the smaller the storage, storage units. Yep. units. George? I wasn't at the uh, original hearing on this, so uh, I'm going to be stupid about a couple of things here, I might ask. Uh, why, why did you decide not to put a sidewalk on Arrow Road for this development? Why are you asking me why I didn't? Why, why it wasn't done? Why it wasn't discussed? <laughs> I defer to the applicant. I mean, you're acting like this is, we're just going through a couple of details and uh, going through this approval. So, well, first reason there are no. Uh, I have to go back and ask sure. the questions I would have asked if yep. I were here. There are no sidewalks to, in the neighborhood to connect to. So there's no sidewalks on the Berlin Turnpike. Correct. There are no sidewalks on Arrow Road on either side right now, I don't think. And then there are no sidewalks on uh, Russell Road until you get to the entrance of the crossings, I think. Mm, yeah. So, I mean, so they would be in isolation. Well, I think I vaguely went through that with, on the corner of uh, up the street that we talked about it. And, uh, and, honest, and honestly, they wouldn't meet oh, But There is a residential area be, there, uh, ski slope, we're talking yeah. about more and more walking. Yeah, but, so, but, but you wouldn't connect. Isolated. To anything but that's and, and I think that's primarily why the other question that goes along with that uh, was there any discussion about widening Arrow Road above part, well what the, the road is wide at the beginning and then it narrows up about where the uh, split will be on the property right it, it splits the two lanes right, right here yeah we, we put this curb cut location so they don't it doesn't conflict yeah. like um, there were no, I, I guess it was is your a question. My question is. Is to the commissioner uh, to myself. Probably to the, uh, our uh, town planner. Uh, have we ever talked about widening Arrow? Uh, uh, we, we haven't. I mean, uh, the, the, I think the answer was the, you know, whether the traffic study justified an additional right turn uh, extension of the pavement down there and I think the answer to the traffic Good. study so, so it's wide enough to accommodate all that right so the reason you are going up the hill is not important there is a conflict with a bus stop which I believe That's the plans exactly show moving the issues that made Correct. me think about it yes yeah. Yeah. but we did discuss that part of it there is a conflict right there because there is a uh, and there is a problem with the bus e driver either taking a coffee break or so there is there is an issue there that um, will have to be dealt with as the project goes forward in terms of the, the bus pickups there and whether the bus is allowed to, because if he stops farther up or there's going to be a sight line obstruction, people having to you know cross That's the center line. That's also part of my thinking yep. why widening I was questioning because the buses do use that. It's, they do. Yeah, but widening... It, it's I mean, being, that's a big it's being deal. widened we, for. They do require this kind of stuff once. In but it's being widened for the queue for people stopping at that stoplight. If you widen all the way up to the end, the queue won't go up that far, so it's worthless. The queue lines don't go that. That okay. Correct. That's exactly what I'm asking. I thought it might because of all the uh, state facilities no. and all, I mean, uh, yeah, all, where you know, people from. cutting through maybe because of the lineups. But well, I think that's improving at 175. I just think that the, the bus driver's uh, practices will have to be modified accordingly. Okay. I, I think there was a reliance uh, by this commission upon the review of the DOT as well in terms of uh, the backup that they were likely to see. Okay. Um, didn't, um, didn't oh, after another thing comes up in my DOT mind. was going to review. Oh. Right, so, so, the, so the DOT has to go through a review process still. The, re, the DOT has to go through a review process still. Oh. So we were relying on the DOT to, to tell the applicant whether the traffic analysis they did required it. Cause, because they would, they would make those comments. Sure. Uh, we we kind of, and I understand we're handling both applications at once. I guess just as a, a few clerical points. Um, on the subdivision, the only waiver, there, there is a waiver requested, as Mr. Gillespie indicated, for the sidewalks. Um, they, they didn't come up during the special permit. The this is a new application for the subdivision. I understand there's a requirement with the subdivision application to to, pl to install sidewalks along the frontages. Um, I took a I drove by the site as well. I confirmed exactly what Mr. Gillespie said. There's no sidewalks from Cedar Mountain all the way to 
uh, where the Berlin Turnpike. I accept what they said. Perfect. So there's, there's, uh, well, if anybody else is. Sometimes I could not. But I <laughs> Understood. Um, so the, the only waiver request with respect to the subdivision application would be for the sidewalks. Um, otherwise, it's creating two non two compliant lots. Um, with respect to the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, with respect to the special permit application, uh, the commission on July 5th approved three waiver requests um, despite some slight reconfigurations to the property. Obviously, the waiver for the five parking spaces tied to the self storage facility would be the exact same requ request that we had previously. Um, similarly, there was a request to reduce for the minimum landscape island width from eight feet. Um, on the gas station property and then finally we had uh, two spaces um, two parking spaces that were within the front yard setback slightly as part of that previous application uh, consist similarly although those two spaces have relocated um, it's now two spaces here um, as I believe from Mr. Gillespie's comments those are the two spaces you were referring to correct Yes, um, that would be in the front yard set back there. So the special permit application, uh, we have three waiver requests that are cons the exact same language, exact same sections that were previously approved by this commission in July. Um, other than that, we did receive comments from the town engineer as well as the town planner. Um, we've reviewed them. There aren't any what I, that I would consider causing great heartburn or concern. Some of our Quite frankly, um, I, think, I think we uh, moved a little faster than expected in terms of getting this application, and there's some coordination pieces with respect to typos and things of that nature that we need to deal with. And then Mr. Gregor asked for some additional stormwater analysis. Right, and stuff. you met all of his requests. We're working through those now. Memo. So again, we're, we will. We received the memo and are working through those. The My understanding would be, well, my objective tonight would hopefully be to uh, close and hopefully have um, action taken on the subdivision hearing from conversations with Mr. Gillespie. It's understood that um, we'll present the special permit. I'd love to hear any comments, questions, concerns that may come up um, that are still outstanding. Um, while I'd love to obtain a conditional approval to address town staff comments, uh, our expectation would be to be back in front of this commission on the 19th for approval for the special permit. Back in the what? On, I believe you have a December 19th meeting. For the, approval of the for the approval of the special permit. Oh. Again, I'd be happy to, oh, okay. if, if the commission was comfortable because this is a, a reapplication and some yep. of these issues are somewhat clerical in nature, some of the comments, I would be happy to work through them with town staff. So um, I may still discuss certainly. a couple Absolutely. more questions. Uh, all the requirements were met then. Is, is, this, is this memo from... Gregor, uh, that's on the subdivision application. That's the only thing outstanding? Or on the subdivision application. Subdivision only on the special permit, the okay. there's a, a variety of things, that. right. Um, the other thing, so wait a minute, hold it. That's a subdivision. Okay, so the rest of all these other comments are on the special he permit. He wants to work those out with you from what he's And come back at the next meeting, yep. Okay. Um, I don't like the uh, architectural rendering of the front of the building. Which building? The, uh, the gas station. The, I guess. I mean, I'm not impressed with it, even though our architectural review people said it was okay. Sure. This is, um, I'll, I'll be quite honest, I'm kind of, I, I guess I defer to town staff for this one. The original condition of approval on July 5th, um, it was understood that the gas station was a conceptual, that previous, ren those previous renderings were conceptual in nature. When a tenant was determined, we'd go back to the design review committee. Um, because we were going back anyway for both signage as well as for once we had a tenant for the gas station, we were to go back to design review for, um, to discuss the uh, Arrow Road facade of the self storage facility. Um, we did that. We were there last week. They and they said okay? They approved, we made a slight modification to the self-storage facility facade. We added some additional gray banding and added some additional landscaping along Arrow Road. Um, the architect was at, the, the project architect for Apple Green was they at the meeting. They were happy with it. And they were satisfied with the architectural and the, land, fact, and the site one design. One of the members said that to me directly this week. 
Fair, right. happy with it. So I, I so I, I guess my my I guess in the form of a question, I, I'm not I sure. I don't like it though. Noted. I guess in the form of a question, I don't know how best to handle any additional architectural comments, having worked through and obtained approval from design review, and having been previously directed to go back to design review to obtain approval. I, don't, I'm, I feel like we're chasing our tail. A lot of frontage to it. I don't see anything so too. You're not going to offend me. I'm an engineer. So. Well, that's my opinion. I don't know. Do I do. I, I, I can certainly. So do you want we to receive very positive. Do you have something to offer in terms of uh, designing the first time and designing the yeah, I mean, George, the first time around, I don't know if you remember that's the. Joe Hickey telling me it's yeah. fine, they said. So. Yeah, no, they did approve it, uh, the revised plan. The first time around, they really did not have a. Uh, an architectural rendering that they were going to go forward with because they didn't have a, a specific end user in mind. So uh, it was really a, a placeholder uh, based on the size of the building uh, and the location of the building. So this revised plan, the building has moved and the building is bigger. So um, consequently, they've uh, come up with this particular design. What and, the, and the project architect did bring material samples. He did bring color samples. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure Ms. Bradley can can paraphrase the discussion as well as I can. Um, but ultimately, in, you know, it, as opposed to doing a split face CMU masonry block building, uh, the architect was, you know, the architect and the tenant were, you know, very optimistic about how this would be received as it does have a more <coughs> New England cottage look with the, with the stone lowers, the glass frontage, uh, as well as the, you know, architectural shingled roof. Um, I, again, not being an architect, I can certainly get up there and point at different features, but I'm not going to sell you a bag of goods. I think that's about so, it, Mr. Chairman, I think, for me. Thank you. Any other questions to the applicant? I'm going to... I guess I'm just curious about the DOT review. My... Yep. My... Um, I guess my one concern is that everybody turning southbound is turning into a trap because that's the exit-only lane. And I'm just curious what they would do because you only have 200 feet until you get to the overhead sign where you have a solid line that you can, you're not supposed to cross. It, so I'm just curious if sure we uh, if and I, that conversation has started. Certainly, yeah. We I, I've kind of de derailed my own presentation here, but we um, as part of our previous discussions, and I think we were we were left with though we're hoping to hear from the DOT at the next meeting. We came to the next meeting still heading from the DOT. We have heard from the DOT. They provided minor comments uh, specifically with respect to the proximity of the I got to go back to the site plan. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, the only the only comment they had, they were satisfied with our traffic study. They were satisfied with the site layout. Obviously, the, the goal for the DOT was to push the Berlin Turnpike curb cut as far from the intersection as possible. Um, now, that's that contradicts the concerns with that exit lane. Um, their only concern was sight lines. Um, so the retaining wall and the landscaping at that curb cut has been pushed back slightly. So you do have adi some additional, uh, some longer sight lines so you, vehicles leaving the site can see mm -hmm. better. Uh, but ultimately, they were satisfied with it. Uh, we haven't submitted for an per, uh, encroachment permit, obviously, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but all indicators were, and the comments were minor in nature, that we'll submit for an encroachment permit. And once yeah, we have I don't it. think it's a dangerous condition. I just was concerned with what the feedback would be from the sure. uh, so and It's then, probably eight hours during the day when you can actually get into the middle lane. <laughs> <laughs> and then, similarly, the, um, the comments about the bus shelter and CT Transit Authority, we did speak with them. Uh, I, I think we presented this at our July 5th hearing, because I believe they were pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, they had no issues with the slight relocation of the bus, the uh, bus, the south side of Arrow Road um, uh, bus stop. They just asked that we do what we could to provide a, a flattened area. There isn't one now. It's actually what appears to be a previous curb cut where people just kind of congregate. Um, but our proposal now, and we've provided them an updated plan with grading and a relocated sign. Um, is we graded out a relatively, keeping in mind the grades on Arrow Road, but a relatively flat area and relocated that sign and they were satisfied with that. So from uh, outside agency approvals, um, DOT, we received comments, we're comfortable with them. CT Transit Authority, we worked through coordination with them. Um, the site doesn't meet any requirements for a DEP appro DE, DE -EP approval. Um, so really it's uh, Planning and Zoning Commission and if, we have to go back to design review. And, wet, and wetlands, maybe? 
in Wet, second. Wetlands, no wetlands. Even the we outfalls. received the previous approval for wetlands as, with respect to the earth to the erosion and sediment control. Card. Yeah, that's an, I, I don't consider it an outside agency, but yes. Fair enough. So, um, so let, let me resolve the SUV thing. Yeah. So I I think there are comments from the town engineer um, about access to uh, with a tractor trailer. Yeah. And this commission. You said you weren't sitting in on it. This commission decided that, you know, or, or accepted the applicant's proposal that, you know, tractor trailers aren't coming in here every day. Um, and so it would be in difficult, if not impossible, to design for that. And we accepted that rationale. So it doesn't, so it doesn't accept the WV50. It doesn't accept okay. the tractor trailer. But I, I noticed that so, in so the Derek, comments of Gregor, he mentioned it again. He I mentions guess. it again. And, and was there, there, was a, there was a turning movement diagram in the approved set of plans, and it's not included in this set. That was his comment. So he has not seen the revised um, circulation plan. So that was so, right. no, so that resolved. No, we haven't seen it yet. Well, I, I guess it's, it's, it sounds like there's two separate issues. And, and as Chairman Harley said, I know as I recall, and we got into really the specifics of the operations of the self-storage facility, there, there's always been, and there's always will be a need, as long as there's a gas station there, to put an 18-wheeler on the site to fill the, the gas tanks. Um, I can go on the record and say that I know, I know we can get an 18-wheeler through that site. We did run the turning templates. Um, I don't have a good answer why we took that figure off the plans, but it'll be on the revised submission. Um, with respect to 18 wheelers for the self storage facility, as Chairman Harley indicated, we had a lot of discussions about that. Ultimately, I believe when we looked at, when we discussed the floor plans for the self storage facility, they're like 120 to 250 square foot storage units. No one, you're gonna need to rent out, I think it was upwards of 20. So units won't accommodate. Right, you'd need to rent 20 units to, in order to, huh? correct. Um, huh? So at, it was the commission's discretion that the self-storage facility did not need to accommodate the 18-wheeler. Um, as, as I said, the front needs to accommodate it and can accommodate it. Um, whether we need to come back in front of the commission or we can work through those comments with town staff, I'm confident we can provide the turning templates to satisfy concerns on the front parcel. Uh, so I, 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 think, um, I think you clarified the fact that I was misunderstanding Derek's comments. I thought we were talking about the WB50, the tractor trailer moving on the um, this self storage his comments were regarding the gas station. now he had two two sets of well or maybe it was my comment I, I think he might have made the same comment but <clears throat> so he asked me because he had concern originally on the self storage he preferred a um, design that allowed vehicles to go around the building and he wasn't at the hearing where mr. Patel uh, explained the nature of the business the type of uh, customers and the very uh, or extremely limited uh, chances that a tractor trailer would have to now access the site. Move into town, right. Not being able to move to their house and come out there with the tractor trailer. And, so the town engineer uh, wasn't he wasn't privy to that conversation. It was one of his comments from the original uh, comments. So he wanted to make sure that it was at least discussed and that the commission made a an educated decision as to whether that was necessary or not. So, so correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong about the way I'm going to try and summarize where we are. So we've got these two public, two different applications before us. We've opened up the public hearings on both of them. Um, we, there were comments provided by staff to the applicant uh, concerning the subdivision application, and they're separate from the comments that were provided to the applicant on the uh the special permit Have i got that right yes correct okay yep so it has staff received and are you comfortable with uh responses to the you know rather substantial comments that have been re received for both or are we really or should we be focusing on one or the other only so the, the comments made on the subdivision were uh, pretty minor and limited and i think uh could be um, handled by uh, a series of you know three or four conditions if you'd like to do that tonight uh, however the comments on the special permit were uh, much more substantial and uh, and the applicant uh, obviously since Thursday probably hasn't had an opportunity to really respond to us um, and submit revised plans to address our comments so I indicated uh, on the phone last week that 
potentially you could handle the subdivision. Not that it necessarily helps moving the project forward, but at least get that out of the way and then come back um, at the next meeting with uh, revised plans and a memo that addresses staff comments so that uh, things are buttoned up uh, on the uh, convenience store application. Okay. Everybody, everybody following that? So specific to the subdivision application, I'll remind everybody that there are, uh, there's, there's basically one waiver and that's for the sidewalk discussion, all right? Um, and we still need to resolve whether it's appropriate to put the easement on the plan. I, I, I tend to think it is consistent with, uh, with staff thoughts. And, and I think I heard the applicant say that they will if you know, it's not what they would prefer, but they will. Right? Am I That's correct. paraphrasing, yeah, paraphrasing that, correct. that correctly? Okay. So yeah, it was the waiver for the sidewalk, the, um, the easement for the retaining wall, the rights to drain uh, on the um, south side of the property, and then uh, modifying the notations on the <coughs> front yard setback for both parcels. So those were the suggested conditions. Four conditions. Right. Yes. All right. So so let's let's try and take them individually, shall we? And just what what questions do we have on that topic at the moment? Is that reasonable? Would you? Yeah, I have no derailing question. you. I, I think the only question I have is whether Derek's separate comment dated December fourth on the subdivision has been taken care of with regard to locating the proposed boundary line so the proposed retaining walls on yeah i think if i think if the easement um condition is addressed he didn't necessarily see the you know and and, and need to move the retaining wall but i think the applicant indicated they were going to remove the retaining wall onto the self-storage site which would just be a slight modification so um so maybe adding that as a Fifth condition. Okay. You're going to be generally okay with that. It's just conditioning the fact that you've said you're going to move it back. And it's actually already. I saw it today. It's been moved already. Right. But it's not even shown on the subdivision plan anyway. So I don't know that it. It's more of that. That might be a more of a condition for this for the special permit. But but it defines it. <clears throat> it helps define the easement, right? And you want to see the easement accurately. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, so I, I guess because I don't want to, I want to cloud the two issues. Why don't we act on this particular part right now, shall we? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, is there anybody here? F <laughs> You're with the applicant, right? Okay. So, that, so there's no comments coming from the public, right? Well, I'll make a motion that we close the hearing for application 1966-17Z, <clears throat> which is the subdivision application and continue the public hearing on 1967-17Z to December 19th. Second. Okay. Nicely said. Okay. And we have a second. You guys following that? Yep. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So, a motion on the? Rich, want to follow up with the motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. We approve application 1966-17Z. Um, what was the comment number six, revised notes, so parcel A and B showing that the 25 foot yard on Arrow Road is a front yard, <coughs> not a side yard. That's right. Eight, um, a waiver of the requirement that they install sidewalks yep. on the streets in this new subdivision. Mm -hmm. Nine, um, plans be revised to show easements to the extent necessary for proposed utilities, drainage, or maintenance of the retaining walls. Um, another condition that the retaining wall be moved onto parcel A, the self-storage property. And what else? I think you hit them all. Okay. You combine them all. Is that it? Exactly. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Thank you. All right. Um, if, if I may bring up uh, one item with, and, and I, I thank you for your time in advance. Um, one item that uh, Mr. Gillespie asked that I, or suggested I bring up to the commission with respect to 
the overall development. Um, and given the time, I'm not sure how much thought you guys want to put into it, but I will po pose the question. Um, the owner has asked um, the, the town staff to consider uh, authorizing the lot, lot clearing, uh, specifically with respect to the trees. Um, ultimately, we're, we're having a kind of mild winter at this point. The expectation would be to install soil erosion sediment control measures per the wetlands approval in the previous special permit application uh, and commence lot clearing or tree clearing operations. Um, it would be at the discretion of the commission whether or not they'd allow for additional earthwork. Um, the goal would be, and obviously it's really <coughs> if the commission has some comfort level with respect to the special permit application, the, the goal of the tenant would be to start um, to have a pad ready site and start vertical construction in early, in early spring. Um, in order to do that, obviously there's a lot of trees on the site, so there's an advantage to taking advantage of the so far mild winter. Um, and Mr. we talked to town staff, they had indicated that because there's a pending application, uh, they weren't necessarily overly comfortable with it. However, there is also a, a previous approval, um, so it was worth bringing to the commission's a, attention the request. And How long does it take to take down that whole site tree-wise? A week or two? A week or two if it's not, if there isn't two feet of snow on the ground. So if the weather is good, a week. Right, so. Don't we have to establish a bond for the erosion and the soil and erosion control? The, so there is an improved erosion and sediment control plan that was mentioned. So that technically has happened, which probably helps to move things along. Um, I don't believe the Wetlands Commission established uh, or attached a condition on establishing a bond for erosion and sediment control? They did not, no. 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 Well, in, uh, well, I think we do that in the subdivision context. Yeah, um, it's unusual for you to do it in the zoning. Actually, I'm gonna talk about that under staff reports. So there is there, would, there is no condition right now on, on having a performance bond for that. Okay. There, there no public bond for what? I didn't get that. Right. Go ahead. So, so Rich asked the question, in, in, in certain cases, the uh, Wetlands Commission would establish a performance bond to guarantee that the erosion and sediment control measures are implemented uh, properly in accordance with the plan. So, um, but and they did not do that in this we case. Do that here. Uh, it, it has not been your practice to do that. Yeah, right. Well, Only well, in the case of subdivisions I, where there's public improvements, right? So. But I understand the hill here. And yes. The issue. Yes. One of the and, and I don't know if this helps in any way. Um, one of the requirements of the Inland Wetlands Commission was, as part of the approvals for the for any earthwork operations, uh, the engineer of record, which obviously would be Langen in this case, um, provide weekly inspect. One provide a pre pre construction meeting, conduct a pre construction meeting with town staff, site contractor, and general contractor, contractor, and then conduct weekly inspections and provide those reports to the town. Um, so if we were to if the commission were to find a, a, a means to move forward with the lot clearing operations, the some of the comfort that hopefully would be given to this commission would be that the design professionals would be on site monitoring and reporting back to staff weekly that soil erosion, you know, their soil erosion, soil erosion and sediment control measures are installed. They're functioning properly. If they're not functioning properly, we're out there weekly to to see where the issues are and provide, you know, on the fly suggestions as to. Uh, you know, uh, modify those measures to ensure that there is no offsite erosion occurring. Um, I, I believe that was what was done in, um, so, so I, as opposed to doing a bond. So you're you're asking really to, to to cut the trees, not to grub, right? Now you're, you're not taking it down. You are you just asking to drop the trees, or you ask? And the stump. So you'll be you'll be getting into the ground. And is there another approval process of the town to start excavating? I, I guess we're, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, <clears throat> what value do we get in saying yes, all right, that's part of it. And the other side is, are you asking for the whole site or is it just the pad of the gas station, the whole site? Okay, so it's so what you're really getting at is clear, grub, and start earthwork. My my understanding was not to start earthwork. Um, That's at this point the the request would be to simply cut and grub the site. 
Okay. So, so timing wise, is there a meeting two weeks from now? You know, when we talk about coming back again, are we talking about early January? I think you want to come back in two weeks. The intent would be to be back in front of the commission on twelve nineteen. The concern with waiting for that till that date to obtain approval for the clearing operations would be, as we all know, that the weather could turn on a dime. Um, we might, I might be driving my pickup truck and not my sedan here. Uh, in, in two agreed, weeks. but then you're not excavating the exactly. Either, well, we could right? excavate. So, so that's kind of what I'm getting at. You really well, we could we could excavate between now and the 19th. I guess is the, would what would be the hope? Or not excavate. We could clear, clear. and grub. I apologize. And, and start and start excavating the 19th if it's still clear. We would start excavate. Well, we I mean there's still a process. We before we could start excavation work, they could do that in advance of the DOT permit. But I would assume I believe we would need at least a foundations permit, correct? From the building department yeah you're going to need engineering on the retaining wall that you know right. the building department signs off on and uh, foundation permits for the buildings <clears throat> so if so if you're not really going to start excavation you know until what put a put a plus or minus on it. is that the end of january i don't know how long the process takes but if you're not going to get in there and do anything until the end of january dead nut in the middle of winter uh, I, I guess i'm not overly confident or comfortable with cutting all the trees for six weeks and letting them sit there. It, the cutting the trees, in my mind, I could, is uh, the easy part, mm -hmm. right? Un if understood. You're excavate, uh, understood, and the, the intent would be to take advantage of getting the easy part done now in case winter goes into April, uh, with the expectation of being out of the ground on April 15th. If winter comes late, we could be doing nothing until April 15th. But but the trees would be down, right? I mean, you, absolutely. I, guess the site would, I mean, the site would be, yeah. we would be required to make sure, yeah, yeah. we would be, be required to ensure the site was stabilized. Um, ideally, by January, it's frozen and stabilized because it's a solid rock of ice. Um, if it's not, we're still out there doing soil erosion and sediment control inspections to ensure that the erosion control measures are in place. I, I guess, I guess I, I don't know if I'm misunderstanding must understanding the, the purpose right so the, the trees are the easy part if it's still warm enough for you to excavate it's warm enough to take down the trees for one for one week of work right so you know if you get all your permits in place your foundation permits and such that you can start excavating and it's end of january if i'm uh -huh. putting a reasonable time frame on it no, then whether you're putting the shovel in the ground to excavate that week or one week later because you had to cut trees I'd rather the trees stay there in case you don't get out there rather than taking the trees down and then for six weeks there's nothing certainly no it's a valid point and just so you get ahead of it in one of my comments uh, in the memo was that there are public trees along Arrow Road that can't be touched until the tree warden correct signs off on that so somebody should be having a parallel conversation with him to at least get that out of the way I think you have to go through a process with him okay. that may take some time. So maybe maybe sure. tomorrow somebody reaches out to him to at least understand that and sure. you don't no. get hung up on that um, because I think you're planning on taking the majority of them out of the, the right majority of them on, because of the change in grade. Right. They come down. So right. just keep that in mind if so you would. What do we have, a 30-day? I'm not sure what he has. Mark, mark them and wait 30 days for the public to scream before you can sure. take them down? I've been there. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. We did the, I had to deal with the Red Hawks in West Hartford for the Del Mar Hotel. So we've yeah. been there. Yeah. yeah standing yeah, standing yeah. around waiting for the eggs to hatch. <laughs> so is everybody, you know, generally where I am on that issue? Yeah. I mean, don't, the, don't be cutting the trees? Cutting trees, unless you can actually get in there and grade right away, then. What's the point, right? I mean, yeah, I mean, exposing three acres of very sloped soil this time of year without any anything other than the fact that they're going to go out every week and say yep the hillside washed over and, <laughs> and then we'll be hoping it freezes so it doesn't yeah. go anywhere right yeah i wouldn't want to change the drainage all right so no fair no. enough appreciate you taking the time to discuss the matter thank you all right, all right. i guess We're anything good. further from me so, so we closed we closed the other hearing so great. um we'll see you in two weeks sounds good thank you all for your time Thanks. pleasure Thanks. seeing you all again All right. Oh, did I not vote? It seems like we didn't actually vote on the motion. Or maybe I'm, I... No, that was a... We voted on the two things, and that was just one a motion. discussion. One yeah. motion, right? We did. Okay. okay. <laughs>
So, other business, min we have the minutes. Um, so, the last set of minutes were th was the meeting that uh, I was not at. Um, was a very, was a very, if I remember right, it was a very smoothly run meeting. That's what I understood. <laughs> If I remember right, it was the fastest meeting we've ever had. That's very smooth. It was very smooth. Who knew it was Tom? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I watched it on TV. It went pretty fast. Uh, I have some issues on the minutes. Uh -oh. Are you going to get to them or not? Is it going to take longer than the meeting itself? No. no page, <laughs> page three, she has a... Page what? Four three? Five, page three, about two-thirds of the way down. She starts talking about... Cartagena. Oh, yeah. It's got to come out. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no, he, he submitted something for the he record. Did? Yes, he, he did. He wanted it included. Why do I didn't understand it? <laughs> no, he specifically yes. said he wanted it read into the record. Yes, he did. So we did. We talked about complete visual screening and that kind of stuff. Yes, it th doesn't make a lot of sense, but he did ask that it be entered yeah. into the record. Yeah, Tony read it verbatim. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other comments on it, no, George? I think the only other thing that I was wondering is whether we Dispensing. have to include the, the motion to close the hearing and that we voted on that as well as... Which one? All of them. All of them? Yeah, because it's got the vice chairman declaring the hearing closed. Oh. We really voted on those things. Okay. Okay, so those edits will be made. Yep. Now, um, <clears throat> I think I think all seven of the members that were present that night are here tonight. Uh, I'm not included, and who else is there? Probably Tony, because Tony is very rarely ever here. So I that's. Oh wait. So I apologize. There's seven though. No six. Robert, George. I wasn't here either. We can vote on minutes even if yeah. you weren't there. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, can I have a motion then as edited? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Rich and then George seconded it. No. Nope. All right. Everybody voted in favor? Yes. Yep. Yep. All right. Minutes done. Uh, what else you got? Uh, staff reports? Um, just... Um, the uh, sign subcommittee has completed its um, its work, and uh, you will shortly be getting a um, draft of the proposed sign regulations. And at that point, we can discuss how to move forward, whether we need additional community uh, input. We can explain to you the work that they did and provide you with a draft so you can start working on that. Probably I'll wait till uh, wait till January on that. Um, the other thing. Uh, the town engineer and I are working on are the site plan uh, requirements. Uh, we're, we talked about that a little bit a while ago. Um, we've been spending a little bit more time on it. One of the things that we've kind of danced around since 2004 when we rewrote the regulations was is the fact that the Inland Wetlands Commission still is doing erosion and sediment control plan certifications in addition to their wetland uh, regulatory authority. So. In a lot of cases, like, like this one, we require this applicant to go to the Wetlands Commission for ENS certification when he has no wetlands on his property. So they have to send their consultants to another meeting with another commission. Uh, and technically, the regulations, zoning regulations presently say that it's this commission's authority. We talked about this some years ago, and we decided just to let the Wetlands Commission continue to do that. Uh, so we're going to suggest that under these changes to the site plan requirements that we clean that up so that people don't have to go through that go through that it, it, this last year just this last year just for example there were eight of those where they had to send their whole crew to the wetlands commission just to get an erosion and That's sediment control review mm -hmm. and those plans are in your packet anyway so it will, it will require some language changes uh, to the regulations but in the uh, effort to make the process a little more efficient uh, both the town engineer and I think that it really should be the Planning and Zoning Commission's uh, domain and that he will 
provide comments to the commission on the ENS plans as, w as to whether they're adequate. The town engineer will. Town engineer will. Good, good. Yeah. Um, so uh, we haven't broached that subject yet with the um, uh, Wetlands Commission. I don't know if they will really care uh, one way or another, but it has been uh, their authority uh, over all these years since at least 2004, and uh, they may or may not have feelings about it. Uh, at the same time, we're probably going to recommend some changes to the uh, plan requirements for erosion and sediment control. They need to be updated at the same time. So um, before we started that conversation with the Wetlands Commission to let them know, I just wanted to get a sense from you guys, it's not a vote or anything like that, whether you think that's the proper direction um, you know, that we should be going. And re the re reason I'm suggesting it is, as I say, it, it's, it seems a little crazy to send people to the Wetlands Commission that, when they don't have wetlands. Sense. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. So, so generally speaking, do you, do you think this would be making it too complicated if you, if you said if you have a wetland application, take care of the ENS? There's, there's a certain expertise yes. they develop along with the town engineer. We would be almost completely reliant on the town engineer. And normally, uh, if it is a wetland application, that they have to submit a wet, uh, ENS plan with that. So it would still be part of their regulatory authority. So if they see things, uh, and that would happen before they come to planning and zoning, so those things could get addressed in the final planning and zoning <coughs> approval. So, yeah, that wouldn't change, okay. and they would still have that authority to do ENS reviews for their regulatory authority, uh, but not for these other ones that they don't have regulatory authority over. And there, as I say, there are a good number of those every year, um, so it could save time and effort, you know, and money for consultants to, you know, at least just do all that at this level. Do they ever get contentious there? Um, not the ENS, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, because I mean, if, if it's not something that they get all exercised about, it's just kind of pro forma, then I, I think we could probably do it just yeah, as easily. Yeah, they don't yeah. tend to be controversial, so, um, and technically your regulations say it's your authority anyway. I don't know how we got into that hole where we left it with them without changing the regulations, but so legally it's your authority anyway, so. Sometimes kind of that's like just in case they catch something that nobody else did or something. So maybe it was like a conservative effort and then it turned out to be a yeah. annoying one. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or we forgot. Or, or we forgot. Or it was just yeah. Oops. I think it was it was the it was the past practice and it really didn't get discussed when we changed the regulations were changed in two thousand and four until a couple of years down the road and then it just we just said let it. Is this gonna deprive many consultants of work? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think the meetings with the town is the, uh, right. the, town of <laughs> the works of here. That's not usually the way I, you know, consider <laughs> consider these things. It's not the Equal Opportunity Employment Act for, <laughs> for consult <laughs> consulting engineers. So, no offense, guys. No yeah. offense. We I still get, we still meeting. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess likewise. You know, and it came up tonight the uh, the certificate of approval being issued by the ZBA, but we still have it as. Yeah, that needs to be a changed special too. Permit. Yeah. You know. The statutes have flip flopped every couple yeah, of years I mean, on that. It's, so it's bizarre. It's crazy. I don't know who's the lobbyist there, but they're obviously getting getting their money's worth. So yeah, that'll that'll have to be uh, tweaked as well. Well so. I, I guess I, I only raise it because you know, sometimes there might be special permit considerations that we want to weigh in on. Right. You know. So Maybe it's not wrong to have both. Have, yeah, you know, they can get the certificate of location, but you still need a special permit because it's probably going to be combined with a couple other things. It'll probably flip back again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Next we'll, legislature. We'll ahead of the curve, right? When it gets sent back. Yeah. So, so, so the um, coming up, we got the, the 170 Ridge Road. That's probably going to be pushed off to the first meeting in January. And. This daycare one, I haven't even looked at it yet to see if it's going to be ready for the next meeting. Uh, but you carry, probably not, but you carried this one over. So depending on how he does, it may be the only one on your next Where's agenda. Where's the daycare one? Between the gas station and the Comfort Inn? No, it's in the back on executive. Executive, there's that lot all the way on the back right-hand side. It's okay. like an overgrown gravel. Oh, it was like the... A spare parking lot. Did we buses and Justin's been enforced? Have to enforce something for there one time? It probably was before my time because I don't recall anything uh, coming in there. By the Comfort Inn. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, back in there. Yeah. I don't remember what. Yeah, I don't know either. But a long time ago. yeah, it would, have been, it would have been before my time. But this is a uh, a daycare uh, center. It's a chain. A build, full building. Full new building. Basically. Yeah. Daycare center. Wow. So. <clears throat> the tax abatement. So how they about asked yet? How about availability for the 19th? I mean, it's obviously the week before Christmas is, you know, as we were pushing it off two weeks, I was wondering whether. Yeah. I know I've got a tough one. It'll probably you come, got a lot of parties to go. Is that you? Got, I wish that. Was. I'll be coming back from Manchester, New Hampshire. That'll be a long ass. Oh, it's gonna be a long day. That's a nice city. Go up there. Yeah, so, so drive back and then spend Stay time there. with you, George. Thanks, right. but no it, thanks. Uh, and hope it doesn't snow. Yeah, yeah, I hope it doesn't snow. Plant meeting that night. So, all right, well, let me know. You know yeah, so let Peter know so that he can. So uh, if we do have to change it, we can let the applicant know. All right. So what about, uh, let's get to it. What about <laughs> Berlin Turnpike? <clears throat> what's going on with the, what's going on with our car sales on the Berlin Turnpike? I, that, I, it's a, he, Justin's out there all the time, so it's a constant moving. What, what, how many cars have we, because I, I went by there the other totally day. Like, Holy smokes. I think it was like 18, maybe, something like that. So if he, I think. Uh, all due respect to Mr. Elishas, he might have been exaggerating, but well, there were more. It's been up and down. Ago, there were no, it it has it has been up and down. I'll have Justin um, go out there tomorrow and do a count and see what's going on. He's had to cite him for pennants and temporary banners and signs, and so it's it's been yeah, a. And I, I felt obnoxious, but one day I was coming down the Knott Street yeah. intersection, and they had an SUV parked in the middle of the right of way. Exactly. And the woman in front of me had to keep creeping out into the road to, to look around it, and she yeah. almost got clipped. Yeah. So I'd Which was just a state of Connecticut in. property, I'll bet. Right? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Right? And yeah. so it wouldn't yeah. take much to no. make sure that's not happening. Well, it's gone yeah. now. Yeah. He wrote them a letter saying it's not it, supposed to be there in the police car. Okay. But it is a constant thing, so I'll, you know, I'll have him uh, ramp it up uh, and you know, make it clear to them that continued. Well, they did expire, too. Um, because I was looking to say really? whether we had a condition about not parking in the right of way, and it said it expired August 1st of 2017. Okay. I'll check and I'll, I'll check on that. Could we get a list of uh, violations that Justin's identified? Uh, yeah, he does. I don't know how long ago he did. He, October. Yeah, he did it in October, so uh, you might have missed that meeting. Just for the So he'll. <laughs> I'm sorry. So he'll did you it. not mean that as a shot? <laughs> <laughs> It was, pretty, it was pretty smooth, though, it was right? It was pretty smooth. All, right. All nothing but net. So he'll, <laughs> yeah. 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 so he'll probably do another one in January. He does them every three months, I think. So, yeah. No lack of work for this guy. I mean, just give us more paper, Peter. Constant. 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 First and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I left the uh, Yule log of plans at home tonight. I need your John Hancock on the Denise, you have the uh, my look, my look, huh? So near my love, graduation's almost here.